The Glock 19 is not only is it the Tupperware gun of the of criminals, it is an under-engineered piece of junk. Did we start? Are we starting? I mean, can you see us? Why are you so close? Because I've widened it. We lowered this. Lowered this. Okay. You know what would be cool is if you did it where we were on the camera. It's the actual angle of the room. So everybody, everybody understood that we were like. Yeah, I can hear me breathe. What's that cabin? There's some like it's always on ghost shit and, and abandoned building places. But there's a cabin in Tennessee someplace. The and when, and when you walk in there, everything that you film is crooked, but it doesn't appear crooked to you. I know oh, what you're talking about. That's just, the uh, John. That is the classic Knott's Berry Farm trick. The cabin's not really tr- crooked. You are. It's a it's a any. Any place that has, like, if you were to go to uh, Dolly Parton's, where, where's Dolly Parton? Dollywood. Dollywood. Any place that has, like, a farm tree or, like, a a low-rent amusement park, they have the crooked houses. I need the mirrors from a fun house. I mean, we should be able to find mirrors. I would think so. Did we start? I yeah, we're we're I'm, 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 it's hard when we don't have yeah, the intro. Don't have it. Yeah, that's so much better. Oh shit! What the fuck is I that? I love it. I love it. Welcome. Come, can to you can you fix this podcast? Uh, what is this? Can we nine? just take that out of there altogether? We can. But for now, you motherfucker. That's it. I like that. I need a little person that sits here, so small that you can't see them. Have you seen that little porn star girl? Uh, I mean, I don't. Little porn star. There's a lot. I mean, of them, she there? might she might Bridget? be a little person or she might be a child. I don't know what she is because she has a. It's super not really. Voice. It's, it's not really porn if she's a child. Well, I haven't ever seen her naked. I assume it she's is, a porn uh, star. Mm-hmm. See that? Okay, that's good. Do we want to talk about how all flights in the United States currently, right now, this minute, are grounded? Are they? Yes. What's the internet say? That it says that. Are they grounded? I don't know. Well, okay, so, again, we rely too much on technology, right? Okay. And uh, nerds, the reality is nerds think they can create all these whiz-bang things that make things better. And when you update said technology. But all of it across the entire United States. Well, I would say. They're piling up right now because of F. AA system outages. Yes. Uh, yeah, I so would is say it that a hack? it's is that an accident? I would say that I would say that the Florida incident. Yes. I would say that this is what I would say that the FAA introduced that software virus into Florida because you always do Are we a, talking about the 5G fucking software that was supposed to take all the ITAR stuff offline? It was supposed to Uh no, when it? you you sent me a thing about Florida, uh you sent me a thing about all air aircraft grounded in Florida like couple a week ago a week few ago days maybe ago. yeah like five days ago maybe and that was a software glitch because they were doing an faa mandatory upgrade and that's why those planes were grounded so my guess is they introduced it in florida and we're like hey this is great it's going to work perfect and none of the shit worked right kind of like anything that the federal government does it never works right and then florida got the system to work and then the faa was like Give it to everyone. Give it to everyone. And so now all the all the systems have syphilis. So you don't think maybe they're just there's something they're flying around that they don't want anybody to see. Well the, <laughs> like the, maybe it's invisible. Well the problem with the problem with something flying around that they don't want you to see is again, the technology for identifying aircraft and tracking things has gone down to the lower level and there are little nerd kids in their basement that are that are specifically looking for those type of things. So shout out to Monkey Works. Yeah, Monkey not, Works. Not little nerd kid, but shout out to Monkey Works. Is he a little nerd kid? No. He's, he's, a, he's a fucking So he's grown, an older He's a grown ass man. He's got a beard. I get you're still a nerd if you're in your basement tracking airplanes. He's got, but thank you for doing what you're doing because we wouldn't know where all the You wouldn't know that all these planes flying around Texas go to Guantanamo Bay all the time. Or the ever Every movement. So, you know about the weather balloons, the, the surveillance balloons. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Those surve- they, the those things have been going for a while. The big, uh, big surveillance balloons. Um, six years ago, and you can actually look this up on the internet. They were flying. They were doing test runs over Chicago, 
a couple other major cities where they were doing test runs with these these surveillance balloons, and they actually were uh, witnessing murders, yes. like being able to witness yep. murders, follow the murderer back to their house, and because it was classified, nobody was ever arrested. <laughs> How about um, what's the uh, what's the thing called? Is it's not stingray? What's the they where they you catch your cell phone signal? Oh, Stingray is one of them, okay, but there's Stingray. another, there's another, there's a, Stingray is like the old one that they're like, hey, mili- or law enforcement, you can have Stingray. Yeah. And so, that's old school. Okay. So Epoch Times, you know who e- Epoch Times is? No, I do not. Okay. Epoch Times, they print a newspaper, kind of all the stuff that can't be said on YouTube, right? So they've got their own little, their deal going. <clears throat> He's kind of like, um, who's the dude that does all the undercover camera, all the undercover stuff and catches all the pedophiles and stuff and then busts them out? Chris Hansen. No, I don't know who Chris Hansen is. Chris Hansen's the guy that's in your. Chris Hansen's the guy that's in the living room when. No, 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 no. Way current, like now with politicians. I don't know. You know. Any, anyways, it's kind of it's got. So this guy comes out and he's like, okay, so the stingray thing, uh, under the guise of um, uh, local level terrorism. Law enforcement departments can now have this thing, yes. But, it, but it's much more advanced, and it can, it can lock onto your. It, it can actually act as your cell phone, and they can mm-hmm. take it over and send messages while your phone is in your pocket, and they can overclock your phone with this device so that your battery dies. So your phone is dead, and they have now captured and are using your as though phone, they are yeah. you. And he said that it's it's so every time it gets busted out that this thing has been used and it gets brought up in court. They dismiss, and there's never been a prosecution where it's been brought up because they just kill it because they don't want to have to disclose that this thing is yeah, out that, there. The, the, usually how that works is the reason why they don't uh, they won't take it to fruition is because the, they don't want – again, if you're in a court of law and they're, con- they're convicting you of something, it's within the defense's right to be like, how did you do that? Yes. And so they don't want that stuff. But the reality is, I mean – I just saw a... It's more of the level we're disappearing you, not going yeah. to court. But they're I, using it for people yeah, going to court. The reality is once a... They're once, using it on U.S. citizens. Once a technology is out there and it's usable, it's always going to be used. They're always going to figure out a way to take that technology, morph it into something that law enforcement can use to create a better tool for yeah, them. Yeah, it's always going to be even used again. Like, like taxes. We're just going to have some taxes. We're just, just, yeah, just we're going to have war. a couple taxes for the war. Okay, so... Are there so there, there's a bill to abolish the IRS, and it, it uh, has to go before and get so it's they're not, they're never going to do it, but what it is going to do is you're going to see who fucking votes not to abolish the IRS. Uh, Republicans don't abolish IRS. No, fuck no. No, but they don't abolish IRS. Republicans do something. Um, I don't know if it's better or. What they do is this is this is what ha- what happened under Bush and the reason why everybody was screaming that we don't have enough IRS agents is what they do is they just stop the funding. So yes, um, you, you know the IRS is on a hiring; they're going nuts to hire another three hundred thousand employees. What I thought it was eighty seven thousand. Whatever it is, you okay. Know, wh- whatever that number is, and then this Congress right now is going. This Congress right now, this Republican Congress is going to vote and be like, okay, that's cool. But you only get this much money. You don't get all the money that you were promised. And so what ends up happening is they can't hire people because they can't fucking pay them. And then if they do hire them, those dudes are just sitting around with their thumbs up their butts because there's there's no chairs. There's no, you know, they just defund it. Would you have them do the IRS? Okay, so let's say they did the IRS. Would you have them do ATF or FBI next? Uh It's a it's a tough question because the ATF is the uh, FBI. No, no, it falls under their. It does. It falls under Department of Justice, but it's a tough question because the ATF is really getting beat. Boom, boom. They're getting their asses whipped right now. Uh, I ain't worried, F- I'm not worried about the ATF and the FBI. Um, I don't. I I would say that the FBI serves a specific purpose. The problem is it's been infiltrated by uh, the left so hard. That it's being used as a weapon. Um, they just need to go in there and clean house. Like wh- well, with all say, of these, a- you- wh- the reality is with all of these agencies, FBI, ATF, CIA, with all of these agencies, they they only need to do one thing. 
There's only one thing that they have to do to straighten out every single one of these agencies, and that is hold them accountable. Hold them accountable. If, if, the, if the President of the United States or even the Department of Justice held any of these agencies accountable for the things that they have done, all the shenanigans would stop. So why don't they? Because it's more money. That's it's right. All, it's That's all about right. fucking money. So did you see Ilhan Omar and Schiff and somebody else have been pulled off of the Intelligence Committee? How well, the fuck were they? How the how on. was she on an come intelligence on. committee? Come on, come on, come on. <laughs> the, he, the reality is those intelligence community. I mean, when you hear about these, uh, when these, when when you hear about these things, they're not. It's not like they're directing anything. They're not. They're just there to ke- collect money. It's right. a. You get more. Uh, you make more money as a congressman if you're on these committees. So. It's just a payoff. It's like having Omar, we're, we're like talking, Omar was on the, she was on the banking committee and talk, she don't. We're talking about the dude who was banging a Chinese spy. Yes. And then she married her own brother or his brother. She married somebody's brother, his brother. Oh, w- okay. So there's. And then Ilhan, Ilhan Omar married her Brother. brother, yes, her brother. She was married to her brother before. Is that weird? A weird like second remove cousin fucker thing, or like no, no, is that no. Really I, I, her brother. Like, it came was out uh, of the mom and dad. It was probably well. It is really her brother, and it was really just a um, convenience. A marriage of convenience. Uh, uh-uh. it was a. Uh, it was a what do you call the? It was a scam. It was. It was. They were scamming the United States in order to get him into the country. Yeah, that's all it was. Convenience. Yeah, it was just a scam to get him citizenship. That's all. And we're, you know, you're talking about the lowest paid government employees. Do they give a shit? They don't. They don't care. The the guys that are checking that, they don't. They're just like whatever. You guys are citizens. Okay. So what about the top secret documents, the classified documents that have been found in Biden's office now? He's the fucking president. Doesn't matter. Yeah, it doesn't. Even it doesn't, if it did matter, it, yeah, matter. Well, it doesn't matter. I mean, because the reality is, what most people don't understand is even even Donald Trump. Like when they were when they were like, oh my god, he's got classified information down at Mar-a-Lago that he's just letting his buddies check out. Um, the president of the United States or former president does not really handle classified information. They have a handler who handles classified yeah, they information. A, they give them actually a there's, printed news. It used to be a newspaper they yeah, give them every morning. There's always a buffer. When you're when you're talking about guys like that, like the President of the United States, there's always a buffer. So if you found classified information that uh, whatever that exposed something that the that the deep state was worried about, it wouldn't be the president that would go down. It would be his handler. There's a there's a fucking dude that is in charge of his classified information. It's not like people, th- I don't know if people think this or if it's just the president is not open. He's not opening his safe, pulling out classified documents, reading them. And then like, let me put those back in the safe. He's picking them up off his desk and then setting them back down on his desk and going about his day. There are people that are responsible for that. And those people are the ones that are in charge uh, of charge of it. The problem with Trump and I would say the problem with Trump and the current president is they everybody's hiring boo boos, yeah? Like they're just hiring boo boos to handle Do you shit. Think and they know that they're retards. Do you think they know, I, you know they're hiring I, what, dipshits? I don't. You know what? Probably not. Probably not. Because I recently just saw. I recently just saw a thing about Jessica Simpson. Who are you looking at? Just the camera. Jessica Simpson. I I, is she even alive? Yes, she's still alive. Is she going to come back crazy in twenty years like Britney just has? No, no. But they did a thing about they did a they they did a thing about all her ex husbands like talking about what a fucking nightmare she is. And Nick can not Nick Cannon. I think it was her second husband. But his big thing was wasn't she married to Aston Kutcher? Uh, I don't know if she was. It's Demi Moore, uh, Demi Moore was Ashton and Kutcher's Kutcher. first, and now yeah. he's with. Uh, can't think of her name, but she's all over the place. He came in the he came in the shop, fucking Hunter. Remember Hunter, crazy ass Hunter. Yeah. He brought Aston Kutcher in the shop. Really? Yeah. Oh, that was, that's kind of cool. Uh, um, some dude that's supposed to be Israeli intelligence. He's a movie actor. Oh, I don't know. Um, is it Sizemore? The, some dude shot his house up, and it had because he had Heidi Fleiss's Black Book. Do you remember that? Okay. I do remember Black and, Book. And every time you would hear a Hunter story. And he was like, he was telling those stories on Howard Stern show. And every time you hear a Hunter story, you're like, there's no fucking way. And then I'm at his mom's house and his mom's like 
they had they had all the shit like her they still had doors that were damaged from the FBI kicking their shit in looking for <laughs> Heidi Fleiss like it's just insane you hear these stories and they're so far fetched you're like there's no way they could be true and and I always say that I'm like you always see the dude on CNN and the, he's like I'm innocent I didn't do it and you're like ah oh, they the cops got you they spent this much money they probably you probably did it right and then you're watching your own shit on CNN right right and I'm like okay maybe there's maybe they didn't do it you know maybe but, um. Any. Anyways. Yeah, they just hired Jess- boo boos. Jessica Simpson. Yeah, Jessica Simpson, and one of the, one of her husbands was talking about how. She has she has lived such a life, and this is probably common with a lot of celebrities. And the reality is, she has lived such a manicured life that she doesn't. She has no idea how anything's done. Like, he was talking about how she would come home and flick her shoes off. And just leave him in the middle of the room. I had no idea how. And they got. he, and he would be like, they wouldn't get put away until I put them away because her mom and her handlers would take care of all that stuff. So like, she'd throw her clothes on the floor, and the next day the clothes clothes would be gone. Have you, wait a minute, wait a minute. Just because I thought of this, have you ever seen the Australian commercial? Have you ever seen the Australian uh, commercial about the clean table? No. <laughs> it's pretty good. It's pretty good. It's about it's this it's this table in the middle of the room, and this Australian man calls the police because his his wife has disappeared. And uh, or when, his when wife, did you notice she's missing? He, his wife has not disappeared, um, but he's like they're asking him questions, and he's like, "This table." He goes, "It's crazy. This table. No matter how much stuff I put on this table, in the morning it's gone." He goes, I keep getting more and more stuff to put on the table, and every morning it's gone. And the the police are like, is this the first time this happened? He goes, no. He goes, it happens in the kitchen too. <laughs> every time I put a dish in the sink, it disappears. Isn't that how your house is? <laughs> it disappears. And he's and they're like, is that all? He's like, no. And the whole time his wife's in the background, right? He's like, no. I throw clothes on the floor just to see what'll happen, and in the morning they're gone. <laughs> and it's geez, it's just hilarious because these two police officers are like, "Oh my god, this is strange. How's this happening?" So, what was the commercial for? I think it was just to show you how badass Australians are. Got it. Okay. Like, do I, you, I do you do your laundry? I uh, if Gina goes out of town for how long does Gina have to be out of town for? Until- anytime, any anytime she's out of town. You do the laundry? Yeah, I don't leave. Uh, if she goes out of town, she doesn't come home to laundry. Meaning I, I do the laundry, I do the day. Everything's got it, got clean it, when she it. comes home. Got it. She's not cleaning up after me. Yeah, uh, I, typi- I typically do my dishes like every time I use dishes. Well, I do all the dishes. Well, but- you're, you're, you're a weirdo. You like... You like doing dishes. I mean, you don't even have a fucking dishwasher in there, do you? I do. I have a commercial. Oh, yeah, there's a commercial yeah, sterilizer and shit in there. Okay. <clears throat> but... That's just when COVID started. I never did the dishes before that. It's because I didn't trust. I know half that's, of them. That's doing not the true. Dishes. That's not true. I've seen you way before COVID. You would go in there and you would just you would see a dish and you'd be like, "Yeah, there's a dish," and you would clean it because it should be. Well, but I don't do I don't do laundry. Do you even have a spot for laundry? What do you mean a spot? Like, is there a machine in that building? There's a whole laundry room in there. I don't think I've seen it. Yeah. There's in the back. I don't even think I've seen it. Yes. No, I would just think that I, you know, as baller as John is, I would think that he would just he just wears them for like two or three days, and then. Well, I do, and then Every it goes time. into it goes into a bin, and then some uh, some spot in Africa they open up the bin and they're all they're all like ah oh, the whole city, the whole town is just wearing SOE t shirts. Well, I, every time we do anything on camera, I always put on a, a new shirt, a new a shirt. Fresh shirt. Is then, that this week's shirt? That is last week. This last week's week. shirt is a lightweight hoodie, and it it's a round logo made in the motherfucking mm-hmm. USA. Lightweight red cords, red liner inside the hoodie, and then this is the what is this? Hard work, no handouts with the round logo. This is last week's shirt. So, but every time we do a video, I put on a fresh shirt, and then they go into the wash or whatever. And Amanda's like, "There's no room on this rack. You've got to do something with some of these shirts." So, I have. I think it's 12 feet long, my shirt rack. And then I just, it's just such a hassle to get rid of them. Like if I, if I'm like, Hey, who wants shirts? 
they wouldn't be like, yeah, I'll take 20 of those shirts. They would want to ask a bunch of questions about them. It's such a fucking hassle to give things to people. Maybe we do a, uh, we do a live video where we put SOE t-shirts on Camden marketplace <laughs> or like those crazy ladies selling, what are they selling now? It's usually like jewelry or something. Mm-hmm. Yeah, where where people could come and get a once worn SOE T shirt, and we just interview those people coming to get the once worn SOE T shirt. Yeah, maybe I don't know. It'd be funny. <laughs> we got to meet them in Walmart. Yeah, uh, why wouldn't you? That'd we we got to meet. Or actually, you know, what would be better is if we uh, we met them at the the flea market in Brewston. Brewston. <laughs> we could probably get really good footage. Am I good here? You can probably get really good footage if we just do a like free puppies. Like how they're always go. There's always puppies giving. There, somebody's always giving away animals in the parking lot of Walmart. We'll do free T-shirts. Yeah, free T-shirts. I'll bet we could get some great fucking content. free T-shirts. Only one size. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I bet we. I bet because you could. if it doesn't fit you, you should work out more. And yeah. if it doesn't fit you because you're too small, you should work out. That's the answer. It's yeah. always the answer. Yeah, I think that's that's a great idea. Are you aware that last night we put together a TikTok page? You might not. I, well, I you thought, might not know this. I thought you already had a TikTok page. Yeah, but we put a, we put a TikTok page together for pulling the thread for this okay, podcast. Okay, pulling the thread. Awesome. You might not know. Austin's been taking these videos uh-huh. and just taking the little hook out of them and making one minute videos and putting them on YouTube. I saw the little hook of the mini truck. That was really cool. It, it was the, honestly that hook was so cool that I was like, <clears throat> okay, if I took the mini truck to Los Angeles. I could have all that. I could have all that stuff done to the mini truck in Los Angeles. Wouldn't it be cool? That's how good that that was. Why Los Angeles? Oh, because you want to do the the low rider. The shit. low rider mini truck. I mean, come on. Got that's it. the only place. You, that's the only place where you could get that done. But for those real. were Nissan hard bodies. Uh, yeah, I know. But so okay, so he, so he's been taking those. So last night, six video clips were put on TikTok. One of them went viral. There's over 3 million views in less than 24 hours. There's over 3,500 comments right now. Mm-hmm. And it's the one about Glock being a piece of shit. Glock's but the big hook to it is... Terrible. So what do you carry? A Glock. Yeah, I do. I, I mean, the reality is I carry a Glock because if I have to throw something in the trash, I won't be as heartbroken <laughs> as if I did any other gun. What kind, of, what kind of gun did Hunter Biden throw in the trash? Only the Secret Service knows that. Weird. Yeah. I heard yesterday, you know, the story has changed. It's crazy that he threw a gun in the trash and he is a felony user of narcotics and he still has guns. Not only that, like you always heard Hunter Biden threw it away. Well, a couple of days ago, I heard the story being told and his ex-wife threw it in the trash. Your ex-wife happened to be in a fucking alley behind some place in a dumpster. I mean, could be true. I mean, it could be true. Think about it. Uh, he's a dump. He he's a fucking dumpster diver, and maybe his ex, his ex wife cared about him, and something happened, and she went looking for him and found his dumb ass running down the alley naked, waving a gun around, and was like, "Give me that! I'm throwing that in the trash. We're going home." Or or he she's looking for him and knew that eventually he's out here in the wild unarmed, so she left that there, knowing eventually he would be in that dumpster and find the gun. It's possible. It's possible. I mean, anything's possible. The The crazy part is, is Joe Biden has been in politics for 50 fucking years, and he has always had the protection of the Secret Service and Capitol Police. Hunter has? Yes. Yeah. And so there's no, here, this is, the, that's the classic, this is a classic example of nepotism. There's no fucking way that all those agencies, to include the Department of Justice, do not know that Hunter Biden is a complete train wreck and did not know that everything on that laptop was legit. Well, of course. I mean, we know we know a dude that did security for Eddie Van Halen. Like, yeah. right-hand man, did a TV show and shit with him. He also worked with Mike Tyson. Both of those were complete fucking train wrecks, and everybody fucking knew it. Like, like Eddie Van Halen has a grid in the concert where he, he can be like... Fourth row, 27, yeah. this chick. Go get her. Go get her. I, cocaine, right? And I'll trade. And, and it was always like that shit was always there. Everybody fucking knew it was there. Mm-hmm. Just like Oprah knew Harvey Weinstein. Oprah was finding little children for them. And and now there's there's nothing to it, right? right. You know, there's no repercussion. Nobody's punished for it. But they, they come after if we even said some shit. We just say some shit that's true. And they'll fucking come after your ass. Um. I think it's just 
there is a there is a line that we don't have the capability that as of yet our line is in a different place uh, yeah but there's a line that i think that you cross and when you cross that line um i mean you th- you think about all the you think about all the temptations you think about all the temptations that we have now of things that we could that we could get away with like there there are things that we could get away with that would be uh illegal now imagine if you had the protection of a group of individuals who were all fucking millionaires and then imagine you have the protection of a group of individuals that are all billionaires like i think that's the problem the problem with the way our government is set up right now is that you can go to congress like you can go to you can go to congress with the ideas of making america great but the minute you fucking step foot in those halls, they are just offering you all this illegal shit that they're like, well, it's not illegal for us, right? It's it's illegal for the peasants, but it's not illegal for us. And you just become corruptible. It's like Crenshaw. Crenshaw is doing the he, Crenshaw is doing the exact Crenshaw same, will be a Democrat within four years. Well, he's doing the exact same insider training that Nancy Pelosi was yes. doing. Now, again, remember what I said. It's illegal for us to do that shit. Yeah, they sent Martha Stewart to prison. So it should be illegal for them, but because he's behind that wall now, he's doing it. Do you think that I think there's something more insidious to it? Oh, there uh, I think I think they I think they fucking give them the the drugs or whatever it is and they get pictures I mean, with them whether they have sex with those little girls there are pictures of them with little girls. This is why our shit is not breaking the limit. When if you look at our YouTube channels, any of them, they don't grow. They grow 5,000, 10,000 every month, but miraculously five to the exact same number unsubscribes every month. We well, never, we never break that level. And it's because of shit like those conversations right there. It could be, uh, I mean, it could be that YouTube is, is terrible now. It's not, I mean, it, the reality is the minute Dude, they I commercial, saw, minute they commercialize and they started putting commercials. I saw a video they that looked very fucking soft. real. I saw a video saying Elon Musk bought youtube or bought google it was very fucking real had all these all this supporting evidence i searched for it couldn't find anybody else talking about it i went out on platforms nobody was mentioning it but holy shit did it look like a real fucking video that elon musk had just bought bought google which would be fucking great i would think for for most people because that all the nonsense would stop and all the fucking behind the scenes shit would start coming out maybe they're gonna kill him Maybe. So have you no, seen, they're going to let him go to Mars. They'll just be like, hey, Elon. Have you seen Tate is still in custody? Oh, is he back in custody? I believe he was never let out of custody. And they just transported him. They were doing some medical scanning and found something wrong. Transported him to a hospital from the prison or wherever he was. Now, there's not any footage of him that I have seen. I did not look this morning. But there is no footage of him Well, maybe anywhere, maybe, apparently. Maybe they've killed him. I mean, if you're gonna if you're gonna if you're gonna take out a personality like that, I, I know Tate fled. <laughs> I know Tate fled to the uh, Romania to those those <coughs> former com block countries because they are embracing freedom in a way that we haven't known in a long time. But if you're gonna make somebody disappear, it's much easier to do it in Romania than it is to do in California, right? It's just much easier to do in in a in one of those countries than like. Literally, they could come out tomorrow and be like, "Tate died." That would be the end of it. Like, what? What would we do? Will we send? Will we? Will we investigate it? What, I mean, they, that would be the end of it. Like, they wouldn't even. Ha- they'd just be like, "Right," because anybody, dead. anybody with power who's mad at him is here in the United States, anyways. <laughs> yeah, but I, I'm just saying, it's like it's it, it, if you know, if Oprah Winfrey went to Romania and died, that they'd just be like, "She died." And that would be the end of it. Like, what would you do? Were you gonna you gonna send the Ghostbusters over there to see what the fuck happened to Oprah? It's just so back to downstream. Who's next then? Well, I don't I don't know because it it seems like uh, it seems like they have uh, they've reined Joe in. Yeah, um, oh, for so sure. They've reined Joe in. I think uh, I think the Jordan Peterson thing is gonna get hard. What do you think is gonna happen? I mean, why isn't he just like, "Hey, fuck you"? I don't, I don't practice. I mean, the thing about Jordan Peterson is he's he's had some significant health issues, so it wouldn't be it wouldn't be unprov it wouldn't be unlike a certain three letter agency to give him a health problem that makes him disappear. Uh, 
And I think so, more importantly out of that, it's not as even as much about quieting him as making the other people think. Like so that's why that's why they're after. Right. Uh, yeah. Can't the be whole, saying what he's saying. The whole point Peterson, is Peterson. Yeah. The whole point is not is to get compliance through silence. And what do they all have in common? All of those people. They all have in stand up, be strong. Yeah. Fucking. They're they're all, the, all goonie, the, the goonie goo goo world. The fucking the the fucking clown show that they're, is. They're all saying the things that uh, are necessary to survive in a real world. So um, I, I yeah. heard I heard something else. You probably know something about this. So Chat GPT. Right now, this AI program, maybe, mm -hmm. are you aware of it? So this program came out. We had a, we were doing a live feed, Jack Spearco, Nicole, and I, and this dude, Goldshot, comes on. And he's a pretty big YouTube channel. I was very, I was surprised to see him on our live feed and happy at the same time. Uh -huh. But he didn't say any homestead shit or anything. He's like, chat GPT, chat GPT, you got to do this. It's the change of the world. And I'm like, okay, how do you, how are you making money on this? How do, how does this benefit us? Right. And a bunch of dudes on the feed were saying, so I'm like, okay, this is like a Bitcoin thing. One dude shows up and they have this whole conversation in here as though it's real. It's called, a, called a pyramid scheme. So it turns out everybody's talking about this chat GPT thing to include uh -huh. Jordan Peterson. Okay. He had him take his book, rewrite it in the version of King's James Bible mixed with something else and he's like not only did it do it in 10 seconds it did it in a manner that i couldn't tell i didn't write it and it's it's this it's fucking insane how good this is so patrick bet david valuetainment he's like write a song as though write a song about me as though tupac wrote the song write a song write a um give me the give brief me on um the ayatollah khomeini as though it's a speech given by donald trump and it, it shits this thing out right away right well, there was two other programs like this a couple years ago. One of them was a Google program, and one of them was something else. And they had to shut it down because it was misogynistic, and they said it was racist. Those are two key flag words, right? Yeah. Racist and misogynistic. Or maybe maybe it was just telling the fucking truth, and you didn't you interpreted it as such, right? It, and, and one of the other things, the other one they had to shut down, I think it was the Google one because somebody asked it who won the presidential election and said it said Donald, Donald Trump. Trump. Yeah. So they've shut this thing down because they can't control it or whatever. That's the that's the key is it control. Well, okay. Don't be tricked. Okay? Don't be tricked. We are being tricked right now. Everybody's using this uh they're using this catchword of AI. Yes. You're being tricked. There is no such Thing as artificial intelligence it has not happened yet and they are not anywhere close to it than they were 50 years ago what you have is processors that are running at extraordinarily good speeds and programs programs that we create that are creating these things like um art or changing a book around it's yes. just it's just a program it's not a computer thinking that's the thing that people need to understand is ai is not a real thing right now because the minute AI, the reality is, the minute AI goes online, you will know because we are going to be in deep shit. So is not is AI not a program that builds its own program? Yes, an AI is a is a program that builds its own program, but the, itself. But these things are not doing that. What they're doing is they're searching the they're they're using a program that we've created. Like for example, uh, AI Paint. Uh, right now, it's getting sued by artists because. They have realized that what the program is doing is it's really just it's taking ten percent of your shit, fifteen percent of his shit, thirty percent of my shit, and putting it together and being like new art. Well, it's not new art; it's actually intellectual property theft. And they're gonna, I think, those companies are gonna start getting hammered because, again, if you say, take my book, turn it into King James Bible, the 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 AI is not creating something new. It's right. just combining something that it already knows, okay? Uh, and that's the difference. We're not we, – they, they're throwing AI around like it's cool because they want everybody to be like, oh, this fucking thing is so smart. But it's just searching the internet at a faster speed. We could do the same thing. It just takes longer. So I think this thing had – it had 30 million users within one week. Yeah. It, the company is valued at over, I think, $4 billion or something insane right now. Um, I heard today that Elon Musk and somebody else were the actual two original founders, the money founders in this thing. Um, there's a bunch of other huge names that yeah. are in it. I mean, it's 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 awesome. great. It's gonna it's gonna be great technology, but people need to understand there's a difference between great technology and artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence is making its own decisions, and when you can make your own decisions 
at the speed of light through the internet, um, we are useless to I AI. Is, I think this is going to dumb people down. I'm not. Oh yeah. I mean, so think Austin, of, Austin took a picture of me and, and it, and put it into this thing and it shit out 12 pictures. One of me is me as Superman. One is me as mm -hmm. Captain America, me as the Sphinx, me as a Pharaoh. It's, it's neat. I don't see how to utilize it. Um, but make you have, giant, you make, you take those pictures, you make giant artwork and you sell them. So maybe. And people will buy them. We, or we can start a, uh, we can start a pet, um, uh, what what are those things called? Uh, NFTs. We can start a pet NFT and uh, ask the, who are the brothers? Who's the fighter going to fight Tate? Paul. Paul. Paul Logan. Logan. Paul Logan. Jake. One, Paul Logan. One of them dudes is in some, some seems like he's about to be in some deep shit maybe, it looks like, over his NFT thing. He's got a lot of fucking people that literally want him dead over that shit. Um, but there's principles being like, hey, if we catch you using this thing, you're out. You're never coming back to school. It's the modern, it's the modern day version of the calculator, right? Right. You can't have this fucking calculator at school. But then as you get older, they're like, you have to have a calculator to come to school. Yeah. So people, they're they're plagiarizing things. They're taking these stories and basically just having the system rewrite the cliff notes. Yep. And then you can put it into another program that'll change it so that they can't tell yeah. that you have done it. But I guess the if you if you question it. You could take some kid and be like, okay, tell me what this says. And, you know, 90% yeah. of them haven't, yeah. fucking haven't that, read the I think, book. I think that's where, you know, I would say responsible educators are going to have to go, but they're never going to do it. They're just going to they're just gonna get paid because they don't do it now. Um, is think, you, would have to, you would have to start taking oral arguments. Like you would have to literally be like, okay, just like you said. You know tell what the me, problem with that is? Tell me what you think. You know what the problem with that is? Time. <laughs> You're going to find out that the person fucking, the, the person holding you to review also does not know the material. Oh, yeah. I mean, we are we are getting dumber by the minute because of these cell phones. I mean, it, it wouldn't be, it would not be hard to think that if, I don't know, if, a, if we had a giant super duper solar flare and, and it fried every piece of electronics on this planet. That within a hundred years we would be that you would be like civilization didn't even exist that we'd be all be in caves scratching our balls without without this you don't think you don't think some people would actually I I feel like I've started when I get up in the morning I make a video but I don't I don't look at any social media I don't right. check any of my notifications You're, but the problem the problem John is you and I. Grew up in the greatest time. We grew up in the greatest time that this country will ever have, um, because of because of less overreaching government, because of less of that bullshit. We played outside. We rode motorcycles. We did dumb shit. The generation that's growing up now doesn't know that. All they know is that that thing, that device. Do you, do you think that the older guys were saying that about us when we were kids? No, uh -uh. because I remember. I remember. I mean, they they were probably like they the older people were probably like no you know what I don't think so because it's it was our generation it was our generation where it was nothing for you to be five years old sitting on grandpa's lap drinking a beer with him. At the same time, we'd go to grandma's house and we'd turn on MTV. That's gonna warp your mind, right? And and at the same time, that was you know Tipper Gore fucking pulling D. Snyder into court over some. I am some, sure that there, I, there and are. And they were, tried to shut down Dungeons and Dragons because it was satanic. There were elements, there were elements of our society, but that that was part of the reason what made it so great that we that our generation was able to um, embrace and use a little bit of that technology, but we still went outside. The current generation is not doing that. What do you think the modern day version of that is? Of what? What we were doing, using a oh, little. What do you uh, think the modern day version? I mean, who do you think they? Who do you? Like the reality these is, kids right now that are 18, 20 years old. What do you think they think they're the pioneers of? Cutting your wiener off. I mean, if you, the the reality is, we have created such a we've created such a lie about influencers. The influencers are what people are striving to be. Number yeah. one, number one sought after job for yeah. kids coming up. Right influencers now. is such a sought after thing, and it's not it's not real because you have opened up you have opened it up to such a big a big window. Like think about Hollywood, right? Even now, even now, 
with as big as it is, I mean, it's on its decline, but you, you can name you. When you name the top Hollywood actors, you can do it on one hand. I can't, I don't even know them, but I, I mean, know it. yeah, it, it, the top Hollywood actors. And that's because Hollywood controls that success, right? Right. Hollywood controls that success. And the reason why so, is because keepers, well, there's a, there's a good reason why, because they don't want the system overwhelmed. Because if I take, you know, let's say if I have 10 Hollywood actors, then I know those Hollywood actors are going to be supported by the system. If I have a hundred Hollywood actors, it's not going to be supported by the system anymore. It's too many. And that's how social, like influencers, they're a dime a dozen. They're, they're going through influencers. Like you can't believe, I don't, I don't know if you've seen that. Uh, there was a, I can't think of his name. He was a dude that made millions of dollars doing makeup videos. It's Jeffrey star. Star, Jeffrey Star. We actually, we. Well, Jeffrey, you know, Jeffrey yeah. was like, I escaped from the Illuminati, and yeah. he's in Montana raising damn yaks. Yaks. He's in he's in Wyoming, and he's raising yaks, and he's been very active the last few weeks, actually speaking about this, speaking about Kanye West and and Tate. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah, actually, absolutely. Yeah, the system, the system is not. So uh, he still has his makeup line. He's actually launching yeah. a lot more things right now. Um, so he still has that going, but yeah, there's a lot of dudes come look at Macaulay Culkin, right? You, you'd mentioned movie stars, right? Um, Jim Carrey says all kinds of crazy shit about Hollywood. Um, uh, Macaulay Culkin says that the whole, have you heard of the red shoe club? I have not heard you of the see, red shoe club. You see people like the Pope and all the presidents and all these high level people all wearing these red shoes. And Macaulay Culkin says that those were made from children that were abused and then sacrificed and th that those shoes are actually made from dead children macaulay culkin was out as recent as a year ago saying that so who fucking knows well but, i mean again again it's it's all about your level of evil right yes like why would a yes and i think that's the, so why would a, were, why would a fucking why would a billionaire steal luggage out of a fucking airport is he a, will that reach no, no, the, he's not really a billionaire. He's just, the problem is he was nobody. Like the reality is that guy was nobody. He was just a slub like us, just slubbing through life, dressed up as a woman. And then somehow some woke fucker was like, Hey, you know, it'd be great is if we put him in Biden's cabinet. And so he's, so he's like, Oh, that's wonderful. But he's still just a slub. And that's why he was stealing luggage. Why is he stealing luggage instead of just not going to Louis Vuitton and being like, hey, hook me up with this and I'll do some social media promotion for you? Because he didn't understand the game he was in. Do you think he didn't? Yeah, I think he did not understand the game he was in. I think that, uh, you know, first off, he's suffering from a mental illness. Yes. He's, there's a lot of video of him out there yeah. wearing dog, dog stuff, too. First, first off, he's suffering from a mental illness, and nobody has ever corrected that or attempted to help him with his mental illness. And so stealing luggage was just like, he probably thought because he was in the club that he could get away with stealing luggage, not realizing that Louis Vuitton would have fucking handmade him bags. Like, they would have handmade him bags so he could walk through the airport with their bags. Yeah. So it kind of, he just didn't understand the game. So... And what I'm getting at that is when you're at that level, the crime you commit, it makes, it makes stealing luggage look like kids play, especially, right? There. Especially getting caught for it and then doing it again yeah. a week later. It's just, it's dumb. Now, I feel like, I feel like as, the, as crazy as that shit is, that's what makes me think that that whole administration or whoever's pulling the strings on that administration, it's, it's China or it's somewhere else, right? They're owned. So they have something on those people, and they're like, I don't, you, will, you will put this guy. You will put this person. I don't believe that there is any single person wa working in Washington, D.C. that they don't have something on. Correct. I mean, the entire, the so entire who, reason why Jeffrey Epstein's island existed was so they could get dirt on those people. Correct. So they say he was an a Israeli spy, or, and her dad was definitely an Israeli spy. Um. So who do you think controls them? It's the it it is the permanent government. It's the people behind the scenes. Where do you think they are? Well, they're in Washington. They're everywhere. You know the the it's the it's the people behind the scenes. It's the people who write the laws. Like you think that uh, you know Camilla Harris writes a a law and submits to he, there is no one in Congress that sits down and writes a law. Kamala Harris can't even write a haiku. This is true, but I'm saying that nobody in Congress writes laws. The permanent government writes the laws, and then they give it to you, and you're like, 
I'm John Willis, and this is the law that I'm going to submit in front of Congress. And you probably haven't even read the motherfucker either. Those people are so crooked. Well, they said that this last, the omnibus or whatever. Yeah, omnibus. It was released at 1 a.m. in the morning. Mm -hmm. They voted on it at 7 a.m. It was 8,000. Like, he brought in, like... Paul, Rand Paul brought it in or one uh-huh, Rand Paul, Paul. Yeah. brought that shit in in a shopping cart. Yep. Like it was, it's huge. They, well, that's on purpose. So it's on purpose because what, what they, how they do these bills is they'll do like, they'll be like, okay, John, check it out. This is what we're going to do for you. We're going to open up a um, general dynamics plant. That's going to make fucking rapier missiles for the air force in Camden, Tennessee. Your constituents are going to be happy vote on this bill and you're like cool and that gets put in the bill and, at the same and then time, they just keep, you don't read any of the other shit that's in there it's like they could stack on you know every every right. family has to eat one puppy a year they wouldn't know that was in there Rand paul and tom massey and some of the other freedom caucus or who, whatever they are um mises why is it called the mises caucus i don't know the freedom caucus they put forth a bill they sub, I, they submitted a bill that every bill will only be one page yep and nobody ever no it, well they're they're actually put they're actually pushing right now term limits they're the same people saying term limits they're actually pushing uh the problem with term limits and that people don't understand is yes when you take a look at somebody like nancy pelosi who's been there for a million years um she has been corrupted to the core but the problem with term limits is you have to remember that it's not those politicians that are running the government it's the permanent government and so if you if you do term limits you're going to have more permanent government and you as a you as a representative are going to have less time to understand what your job actually is and so the permanent government over there is going to be like telling you this is exactly what you have to do because you don't have enough time to do anything else so how do you fix it you well you again you have to start holding these agencies accountable first off you don't allow any um you don't allow any former congressional personnel to work as lobbyists. You, you do your, you do your time, whether that's four years or a hundred years. And when you're done, you are done with Washington, DC. You go back to fucking Iowa and grow corn. That's it. You don't, you don't allow that stuff to continue to percolate in the, in the system. It's kind of like, it's why the department department of defense is so crooked now is because General officers, or actually, it used to be general officers, which made it not as bad. But now, you could be just a colonel, and you are guaranteed that you could get a job in the industrial military complex after you get out of the military. And that job is going to solely be based off of shilling military equipment, whether it's good or bad. You they know? just move around. Yeah, they just move around. Just so move it's around. it's it. You should not, you know, as a as a government, as a federal employee, I don't care whether you're a four-star general or you're the president of the United States, you should not be able to shill anything to the government after your service. So you retire from the U.S. Space Force. You don't get to go work at Space Force rockets. You just don't. You got to fucking tire, period. You're done. You did your time. Goodbye, thank you. That's why we give you a check. Because it's just it just leads to corruption. Can it be fixed? Can't be fixed. Never gonna be fixed. Well, I don't know. We're we're coming to a point in history that you and I may see. Coming to a point in history where globalization is going to die. It's going to die because of the people like uh, Bill Gates and this whole uh, lie about birth rates are destroying the planet. Um they're actually in decline. They're in decline everywhere. Uh, China China has actually been lying about their birth rates for quite a while now. Um, and it, it kind of looks like China in 10 years will not exist as a country that we know it. So, Which means, but what that means is the supply chain that we in here in America love and, you know, we got to have our $10 Walmart koozies and shit um, is going to collapse. So made in America will be a new big thing, but that's going to require a shift in uh, a shift in our thought processes here in the United States, which will probably happen after a serious depression, right? You can't take the, like the generation that's growing up right now that has everything handed to them and they have their phones and their, 
Netflix and all that, you can't. They've had a taste of the the instant and inexpensive. Yeah, you right? can't you can't wake up one day and then be like, "Hey guys, guess what? You got to go to work." You have to have you have to create a situation where that is possible, and the way you do that is through global war or a serious depression. So you put these kids that are out there, you put these kids that are out there trying to be influencers on a breadline for five years, they'll be fucking happy to go to work. Uh, and that's that's probably where we're that's probably where we're headed because Europe is in a Europe is in a tragic decline. Uh, China is in a tragic decline. The so, good news for us is Mexico. Right. Okay. So Mexico. Back, Mexico back is going to save us. Mexico so, is going to save us. So with that, so with that, if the population is declining and we are going to have a a Great Depression or whatever that looks like. You're going to have people that are less impulsive. There's not going to be the impulse buys. Right? right. You're going to buy things you need because your money is going to be tighter. And at the same time, while that, that sucks, if that were to happen and at the same time China is dying, you're not going to feel it as much with China dying because you're not going to be buying plastic shit. You're going to be buying... Well, the reality you're is going to be you're going to be fucking buying rabbits so they poop so you can grow your own vegetables. The reality is it doesn't matter how many coins you have squirreled in your your coiny hole. If the shipping lanes Correct. if the shipping lanes close, which again, uh, most people don't understand, the only reason why you can get an iPhone from China, slave labor. Here in the United States, not slave labor. They could, they've always had slave labor in China, but the only reason why you can get an iPhone here in the United States or any of the garbage that's in your house right now is because the U.S. Navy keeps those shipping lanes open. Now, we are at an all-time low in recruitment unless the Department of Defense closes a service and starts funneling those recruits into the Navy. The Navy is going to shrink. It just doesn't have the capability. Like they want to, they want a twenty carrier. They're they're talking twenty carriers at the end of the century. That's the new carrier. Yeah, the new carrier. Uh, we just launched one. But it, you can't keep people. You can't you can't get people recruited to go out and chip rust. And when you have a carrier, you do chip rust more than you do anything else. So that force is actually going to shrink. And is when that, that out of is that out of necessity or is that just keeping them busy? No, it's out of necessity. Okay. I mean, the beautiful thing about the beautiful thing about the U.S. Navy is they do keep those ships. I mean, yeah, I know there's going to be some sailors out there that are going to be like, my ship was a piece of shit. But when you think about how long of service life they have, and our ships are well-maintained. Compared to any other ships in the world, we have the best maintained ships. And yeah, that's I mean, because think there's... About, think about the F-14. Yeah. When did they when did they fucking get the first F-14s and when did they retire them? I mean, you're talking about an airplane... That we saw, that was like the premier thing, yeah. right? Top Gun was flying yeah. it. That motherfucker was sixty years old. Yeah, at that it's, time. It's and you know what's crazy, is the it, it. What's crazy is in near peer adversary, and this is, this is partly due to the Defense Department's like it likes lying to everybody, but in near peer adversary encounters. So if we were to go near peer, an F fourteen would still be in the game. Like it would still be in the game with modern weapon with modern weapons attached to the F fourteen, it would still be like the it wouldn't be like uh it wouldn't be like um you know going a, a going up against a prop plane. You would have if we were flying F 14 still off the carriers with modern weapons, the Chinese would have a serious problem. Would they shoot a lot of them down? Yeah, but again, the Chinese have one carrier. We have 10 carriers in the Pacific Ocean or in the ocean right now. 10. We want to go to 20. They, they don't have the aircraft. They don't have the aircraft to even think about going up against that. So even if we were still using, like, oh, we'll give you an example. The airplane that is just as old, just as old as the, the F-14 might be a little older. Not sure. All you airplane nerds, go ahead and. Put it down in the comments. I'm not going to read it, but go ahead and put it in the comments. Uh, F-16. F-16 is just as old as an F-14. And the Air Force is talking about rolling those bitches back out. Why? Uh, again, it's all about the weapon systems. The, the F-16 was a really good fly-by-wire aircraft of its day. Um, and the weapon systems are better. Like, mo like most people don't understand. And you may not even know this, John. 
an F4 Phantom yep. from Vietnam flies faster than the aircraft that we are currently using. So the Navy, we have a great Navy. The, the sailors Navy. aboard the the sailors aboard the Navy. I I would say this: it sucks to be a sailor. Like I would not, after you know, being a Marine aboard naval vessels. Those boys work. Like Marine, they Marines don't have to do ship stuff on the ship. Uh, if you're if you are if you're considered if your ship's complement, then you have a job. If you are cargo. Like I was most of the times I went on deployment, then you have no job. Your job is to stay the fuck out of the way. And, you know, when I'm going ashore for two weeks of unadulterated uh, debaucherism in Australia, the Navy's not. The Navy is, they are painting, they are chipping, they are working their ass off. While in port in Australia. Even while in port in Australia. You, they'll, they'll, do, you, they'll, do half com- they'll do half ship's company where half the company will get, li- but then again, I the cargo i get a full week of unadulterated debaucherism in australia and they only get a couple of days debauchery you mean like you went to the gym a lot and um i did some cooking classes um there was some gardening uh stuff like that okay, mostly while everybody was at the whorehouses are there whorehouses in australia i am sure here's the thing i am clubs. sure you were at nightclubs no i am sure that there are whorehouses in australia but literally I've heard this. They line up at the ship I've heard waiting this. for you to get off the ship to take you into town. Um, the, the, like I heard dudes would get off ship and chicks would take them into town to their parents' house and yeah. have, like to oh, yeah. dinner and shit. Yeah, that, that happened all the time. They, the boat, so when you're coming into port, you do honors, you do honors to port. And so you will be in your Charlie's, you know, the, your, your Charlie uniform and you have to man the rails, right? So you man the rails. And so you're, what is that? Is that me? Who is that? You better check oh. that. No, it's Arizona. Do you know who it is? Nope. Maybe Anyways. it's about a military truck. No, no way. Elon, Elon's not in Arizona. Um, <clears throat> so you do honors to port. So you're out on the side of the ship. Now the ship is, I think it's, you know, we were, I was on the big ship all the time. So I think it's 90 feet to the water and they would get speed boats and come out with rocks and throw rocks at you. And you would be like, these motherfuckers are throwing rocks at us. <laughs> Australians. Yeah. They're throwing rocks at us. What the fuck? Men and, and women it, or just women? Just women. And you would pick up the rock had their phone numbers. and their phone numbers would be on it. Yeah, they love they loved us, and it, it's it's just a cultural thing. You think you it's know? still that way? I don't know. I don't know. I do, mean, Australian think, men are still hard. I saw. It's just do amazing. Think, do you think we have sailors pulling in port, and there's like dudes with lipstick and shit in Australia? No, no U.S. sailors pulling into port, and there's like dudes oh, in dresses. U- U.S. sailors leaving the ship in dresses. It's a, that's an interesting, uh, I wonder what the real percentage, like if, if, if we well, went the, on a military the, base, would we see weirdos? The, the, the reality is, or the, is it so few that they the, just, they the reality, it? the reality is the percentage is small. So would you see a sailor get off a ship in a dress to go Liberty in Australia? First off, um, I am sure that that sailor would know that it wouldn't go the way he think it's going to go Especially in Australia. In Australia, because <laughs> they don't, you know, they don't, they don't play them games down there. Well, Crocodile Dundee. Well, yes, there's, there's that stuff everywhere in the world. Uh, some places you got to keep it low, low it's key. A special club for it. Yeah, some piece. I mean, you got to keep it low key. So I don't, I don't think he would in Australia. But I don't know. I mean, I, I, I don't know the, you know, because in my day the big, the big shift was. Um, was females, right? Right. That they started introducing females, and the reality of that is it, it, it didn't. It either went really well for the females, or it didn't go well for the females. Like, you know, most of them are like, "Never again, volunteer yourself." Yeah, I mean, I, I, you know, when a senator is saying that we should have integrated forces, it's it's somebody who doesn't know the reality of life. And why would he say that? Um. Because it's politically expedient, right? It's it's about votes. It's not about the reality of what's going on out in the real world, you know. Pandering um, it's not, to the it's not, pandering to the one percent. Yeah, it's not a it's not a fifty <clears throat> it's not a female fifty three pilot that is attempting to sleep with every staff and CEO on the ship. Did you see? Did you see? It was here in Tennessee. They they there was a fucking law enforcement officer married another law enforcement officer, 
talking about how, how it's working out, right? Even though you, you both are cops and it usually doesn't work out, come to find out she fucked like 75% of the four, the fucking department. Yeah. I mean, the, the, the truth of the matter is what, what they don't tell you if you're a female. And, and don't get me wrong, there are, there are women that are doing an extraordinarily uh, good job in the service. Um, but again, we're talking about 18 and 20 year olds. And if you have 50 men and you introduce three females, it doesn't matter. Um, it doesn't matter what they look like. The reality is they're going to be popular. Oh, so popular. And that's a problem. It's, it's a problem because it, it actually erodes the effectiveness of that unit. Is it, is it still, what was even though the, again, even though the girls, even though the women, sorry, are probably doing a great job, it doesn't matter. Right. You, you were on the first ship. Yeah. That had women on it, right? First, uh, first gator ship that took women over. We had 50. We did a 30 day rim pack. And then that gator ship, we went on a West pack. So we did a 30 day rim pack, came back, I think, uh, four months. We did four months back in Conus. And then we left on that same gator ship. And, that, how, and how many were on the ship? Three out of 50. Out of 50. And how come? The others all got pregnant. I wonder how that happened. It happened on the rim pack, which is amazing because our, you know, our command, you know, the reality is when, when we boarded that ship, the Marines were given specific orders not to speak, talk, look, do anything with those females. And, you know, again, 18 and 20 year olds, you're, you, you can't, you cannot give that order. That order is asinine. It's just not going to happen. And for you to think that it's going to happen is ignorant of life but they do it anyways because they're hoping they're going to have some success but it, it doesn't work you can't have women work in a men's prison and not fucking get them pregnant like right. there's the fbi the feds were up in fucking federal prison all the time escorting employees out because they were having relationships with inmates and again those sailors the the three sailors that went on westpac were probably doing extraordinary work they were probably good sailors but the problem there is now you have 48 empty bunks that's watch standards, that's paint grinders. So other people are doing double time. Yeah, the, it wasn't those three females doing double time. And that ship doesn't get those, those slots They don't get filled. those bodies because those, they, become, they become what's called shore. They become what's called, it's not shore, par, it's not shore party, but they, they still are ship's complement. But they are shore duty because they were incapacitated. So, like, if John, if John fell and broke his back, he's still part of the Peleliu, but he's going to stay at Conus until his back is good enough for them to actually ship you out to the ship. Well, if anybody knows how pregnancy works, that's not going to happen with the females. So you have a ship that did a whole Westpac that was short forty-eight individuals, and that's that's a big chunk. You know, if you think about the Navy and how they run those ships, that's a big chunk. A, sa a sailing vessel runs 24 hours a day, seven days a week. There's no Sundays off. There's no, it's, you're working. And the only way uh, a sailor can get any breathing room is if there's other ships complement that can do his job so he can go hang out in the birthing area and ponder his life decision and why it was a terrible decision do they make those females stay in or do they do, are those females just out of the military at no no they you you can still stay in <clears throat> can they get out if they wanted to i believe back then i believe back in that time period uh you could but uh now the incentives are so great for them that you wouldn't even bother because like um you get so much more time off if you have a child that technically you could do four years of U.S. military service as a female and never, ever work in your occupation. You just keep shitting out babies. You just keep having kids. And then, you know, before you know, and because, because you're having kids, you're still eligible for promotion. So you literally could be a staff sergeant in the Marine Corps and never have done anything that a staff sergeant needs to do. And the military gives them cosmetic surgery and shit. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. They've been doing that. You know, it's crazy, but they actually have been doing that for a long time. Like yeah, we have a boobs. friend. We had a friend whose wife got some awesome fucking tits put in. Yeah, I had. I couldn't believe it when I was at uh, sniper school. So this would have been ninety one, I think nineties. There was a a driver who used to a female driver who used to drive for us all the time, take the guys out, and 
And of course she was familiar with the sniper instructors. Um, she had, she had bolt-ons put on while she was at SOI. And I, that just blew my mind. Cause I was like, was she somebody's well, wife? No, uh, uh-uh. she was a, you know, she was a go-getter, but, <laughs> uh, that blew my mind because I, I, I couldn't see how that had anything to do with so I asked close that. with and destroy the enemy by fire and maneuver. Close with and destroy the un- enemy by maneuver and fire. So I asked that to ask this. Are they letting dudes do the yes. painter chops? Yes, they are, they are paying for uh, – they are paying for – it's not just – the reality is it's not just the – it's not just the surgery. That's not the expensive part. The expensive part is the medication that they have to take because the reality is what most people don't understand is no matter how you feel, if you're a man, your body always knows it's a man. Or if you're a female, your body knows it's a female. So you have to take copious amounts of drugs in order to be one way or the other because you have to suppress all those things. So it's the drugs that cost the most for the military that they have to buy every month in order to keep that person feeling good about themselves do you know anybody, and then they do surgery do you know anybody that's had gender reassignment no do you uh-uh. i so i i never thought about it but i heard somebody say i think i heard like blair white say this or something you can't have an orgasm like if you if you get your your nuts chopped off and your dick chopped off and you get a, a fucking and you turn your audi to an innie there's not an orgasm there and if you have if you have your shit and you turn that into a penis it doesn't ever ejaculate like there is no yeah, I, climax. I saw that on uh, Howard Stern. Howard Stern had a, a, a transgender male who did the whole transition, became a woman, and that's that was one of the things that he was telling. Uh, who's the Who's the lady that's on Howard Stern with him? The Robin? black lady. Yeah, Robin. Robin. He he she he was telling Robin that that was the one thing that he wouldn't have done if he could do it all over because the exact same thing you said is there's no um, there's no orgasm. So he would have kept he not it. know that going into that. Well, I don't. I think it's such a uh, it's such a heated and. I think it's the goth man. I think it's the modern day goth. That's well, the, it's, it's, uh, I'm it's misunderstood. Such a, I, I they were mean to me. It, well, it's such I'm a heated, chop my wiener off. It's such a heated argument and such a because the reality is, I I can see the problem. Let's say John, you and I wanted to transition to woman, and we were like, we're going to transition and be women. Um, I, I see the, pro- I know I have the hair for it. Don't I look at that. It's beautiful. Um, I could see there's a point where there's a point where people are going to be like, well, well, are you? And even in the, even in that community, like even in the, even in the LGBTQ, RS, W, Y community, Y-Z, dolphin, even in that community, you're, you're in a different world, right? You're if you haven't if you haven't cut if you haven't done the full deed, you're not really a woman. So I can see the pressure, and that's what they have a problem with yeah. you saying. And I can see the I can see the the uh, the pressure. Like if you were, you know, if you're in transition, if you feel like you have to transition, I can see that your own community, because it is your own community, that is judging you. It's but not I think, me. I don't care. I think most gay people. We know we know some gay dudes. Yeah, they don't consider them part of that community. They're like, no, we're the gay community. Yeah, the X Y Z and all that shit. That's not part of us. Well, that's and I now think, they're trying to add a uh, um, map to it, right? It's, you can't. It's yeah. not pedophile anymore. It's minor attractive. Well, when so you the problem is when you open a door, all manner of things come through the door. You can't you can't say if you if you're not judging if you're not judging anyone. You say I'm. We're not judging anyone. Well, you know, there's some pretty weird people out there in this world. Like, there are weirdos in this world. And if you say you're not judging anyone, well, the weirdos are going to come out. And I'm not just talking about those communities. I'm just talking about weirdos in general. What happened? I saw you push a button. Did you so, turn it off? Are we still on? I don't know how you got us on this whole general. I don't either. Thing, well, I thought we were talking about back the navy. To, back to so with the navy. You thing. asked if a guy would walk off a ship in a dress. I seen a dude walk off the ship in the nineties in full on bell bottoms and like sixty swag. Like staying alive. Yeah, disco he shit. was. He was pimping. I think disco was before me. 
was it? No. Disco, I don't think 79. disco existed when I was a kid. 79, John. You were But I wasn't like well. going to clubs and shit. I wasn't. Well, okay. That's dumb. You never went. You, you don't even know what a club looks like. Shut up. You've never been in a club. Like, never. The only clubs you've ever been to is when the ladies are handing you money over your shoulder. That's it. That's but, not. But the, like, you never went to a fucking disco club. Disco. No, I don't think I've ever been yeah, to a disco see? club. But because the only disco clubs that existed when you and I could go to a club was down in fucking Hillcrest. I, ta- I take it back. I have been to Studio Fifty Four, and that's supposedly right, I was a there disco with club. You. I was there with you. <laughs> so okay, okay you're see, right. You're we right. have been to a disco you're club. Right. Mm-hmm. Okay. It was in well, the it was in the nineties. But I was about to say, were they playing disco? No. It no. was in the '90s, but you know, studio, you you can still say Studio 54 okay. in it. So the so I heard that the United States Navy just launched a, a, this super carrier. Okay, yeah. And this super carrier, we're going to build a bunch of these things. Yes. We're supposed and, to build and ten the of them. Carrier alone, without a support group, without all the shit, can go up against every military in the world, except the three largest. And the United States is one of the three largest, yeah. right? And they say China is just like failing. Like China, this dude said, I don't. He's some like supreme speaker on China, right? He's this authority on economy and military of China and stuff. He's a, he's a U.S. dude, it looks like. But what he said is he was giving this lecture to these people, and he said, you can take any ship, you can take every ship that, that China has and put it in this room Yeah, they're, to they're, include their carrier. Like, I'm not saying you can put them all in this room at one time, but you can take any ships they have and put them in yeah, this room. Like, are, it, it's all bullshit. It is a bullshit. It, it's, well, okay. The reality is that the, defar- the the reason why we are so technically advanced in this country is because of the Department of Defense has always had like a boogeyman, right? They have a boogeyman. The, oh, the Russians or the Chinese. There's always this boogeyman. And the problem is in those communist countries, the boogeyman makes shitty equipment. They've always made shitty equipment. They've never had. They've never been a real threat to the United States. Like even the, even their nuclear capabilities are not a real threat to what the United States brings to bear. Um, it's been a lie that they've been telling us for fifty years now. Maybe during Dwight D. Eisenhower's time, they actually thought that the Russians, uh, you know, that we we, we could go toe to toe with the Soviet Union. Um, but it's always been a lie. Their equipment has always been shit. Um. Even in World War II, the, the Russians did not defeat the Germans because they were superior fighters or sp- superior equipment. It was because they put a million men into the field and forced them to march to Germany. Um, yeah, and they, they died marching. I yeah, mean, like they died the Russians, marching. The Russians had highways. They called it the Bone Highway or yeah. whatever. It's literally ground up fucking human uh, I beings. Think it's, uh, I think it's every... There's 40 bodies every quarter of a mile in that highway. Um, so, yeah, it's it. It's always been a lie, I, and I believed it. I shit. I used to think, oh my god, if we run into, th-. it's always been a lie, and so we have become so technically advanced that even things that you think of, like when we talk about the F-14 Tomcat, like the F-14 Tomcat could go in. We could send F-14 Tomcats if we still had them. Especially to, if Tom Cruise was flying. Yeah, especially if Tom Cruise was flying to Ukraine. And give them to the Ukrainians, and the Russians would shit. They would shit themselves because the the uh, the weapon systems, the weapon systems, and the engagement ranges that we have are so much better than everybody else's shit. So even if you even if they put their best fighter up against the Tomcat, you know it it would probably be two to one. I feel like I feel like people flying. I feel like our modern day pilots, yeah, can't fly and maneuver in the Tomcat. Oh, uh, well. It, it would be interesting to see if anybody. No, I, I'm sure they. I, the cockpits don't change that much. It's just the technology, meaning but, but the, just the, the flyby. You know, the the yeah. the F-14. I do not believe was flyby wire. I mean, I, I believe the F-14 was flyby wire, meaning that everything that you did, a wire was connected to it, and that's how everything worked. Where now everything, it's just beep boop. Beep, yeah, boop, you don't boop, have to boop, fight the yeah. controls. You don't have to you fight just... the controls, and so those planes fly pretty. I mean, there would be a, there would be a learning curve. Like, I, I don't I think there's any, there's many people that like, even those you think about like F-22 Raptor pilots. I think if he got into a, you know, a B-29 sat in the seat of a B-29, he, it would take 
some time before he realized how to fucking spin it all up. I mean, it's just, it's just lost. It's the lost art of technology that we don't use anymore. Right. Yeah. Because our pilots are dumbed down. No, I think our pilots are smarter better now. Yeah. I think our pilots are better now. I do. I get there. Cause they, they're, 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 they have more physical inputs now. Uh, you know, cause it used to be fly. I know, I know my world war two veterans are going to come out of the woodwork all crazy. But it used to be, you would fly, boop, but there would be somebody else that would boop, drop a bomb. There was somebody else yeah, that did the navigation. There was somebody else that did, there was, there were other people, right? Other computers on board that ship where when you're in a fucking modern day fighter jet, you are the computer, right? It's just giving you inputs and you have to make all those decisions. You think video games train them for that? I mean, it's a good start, but I don't think it, I don't think, I don't think it, I don't think it no, I don't think a fucking, I don't think a guy who's flying an F-22 Raptor is like, Good thing I had PlayStation 3. I wouldn't have made it through flight school. How do you think Tom Cruise looks so good now? Oh, that's easy. He's um, eating children. Yeah. he. I mean, the, what have is he? Seen, he's have, not Illuminati, but he's a Scientologist. Scientologist. Have you yeah. seen the videos of the, the Scientology cruise ship where he was on board losing his shit? Like, uh-huh. like went fucking insane over the, the cruise ship. Um, so what about Travis Haley? What about him? Well, he looks very much like Tom Cruise. You think? Well, he might. I mean, you think maybe they're the same person? You've never seen them together. Uh, I think Travis Haley still does the Daily Seven from when he was in the Marine Corps. So he's probably that's what's going on. Yeah, I think it's just the Daily Seven. If you guys haven't heard, there's a there's a podcast of Grantham and Travis Haley. It's fucking really good. You should listen to it. Do you know those guys? Personally, no. You've never met either one. Of them? I've never met either one of them. Really. No. No, we don't we don't rub in the same circles. I mean, Grantham, he was in the Air Force and Haley I mean, he was in the he was in Force Recon. We don't rub in the same circles cuz cuz he's a ninja. I mean, I don't know. Maybe uh no, I think Haley was East Coast. But I mean, there's a possibility Travis that Travis has been in the shop in Oceanside. Yeah, there but there's a uh, has he? Yeah. Okay, so there's a possibility that Haley and myself were at range 130 at the same time. That was, that's, uh, yeah, there's that's a possibility, nice. but I, you know, two different worlds. The sniper guys are over here. The force recon guys are wasting all that ammo. So if you're listening to this and you're no Travis, make sure you send this to him. Yeah. Let him, let Travis know we said hello. And we didn't say he was eating babies. We said Tom Cruise is eating. Yeah. Babies. Tom Cruise. I said, Travis, you're probably doing the Travis daily seven. Is just superhuman. Um, daily seven. That's all it is. So just, what's the you, daily seven? It's just the seven exercises that you have to do every day that make you a lean, mean fight machine. You don't know what they are, do you? Uh, no. That's why I'm not a lean, mean fight machine anymore. Cause Edit that I don't out. do the day. Edit that seven. out. <laughs> so we 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 went from navies to no, we're up still. Oh yeah, the Navy, carrier the, because the Navy yeah. and the Marine Corps are the same thing. Come on. But I mean, it's even a it's even a stretch. It's even a stretch to say that the the new supercarrier could not, like, when they're like the top three militaries in the world. Uh, then if you're talking about a, if you're talking about the carrier by itself, that can be a problem. Carriers are carriers are very vulnerable. You know, they even though they have aircraft and they're flying caps and they're doing, a, they're still kind of vulnerable to played, other things. I've played yeah. battleship. Yeah, they're still kind of vulnerable. But a carrier task force, <laughs> come on. If the if if a U.S. carrier task force decided it was going to uh, take out the Chinese Navy, outside of a nuclear weapon, there's so, nothing the Chinese could do. So why have we not? Well, because we don't want to, we don't want to, uh, we don't want to create that situation. What's the situation? I mean, if we rolled in there and took out all of fucking the Chinese, whatever milit- Navy, yeah. what are they going to do? Nothing, but so, we're we're right now codependent on we are a codependent country on China for I mean, all the knickknacks. We have and we have a huge track record of throw, overthrowing countries and putting them back together, right? I mean, look well, at we Iraq, a, Afghanistan. We have a. We, Why don't we just go in there, overthrow China, and we, be like, okay, we you're have, free now. Do some manufacturing. We have a huge track record of overthrowing countries. You can't name a single. Well, I, I know I was being we don't, sarcastic. We don't put them back together very well. We did a good job with Japan and Germany, but we let the Japanese and the Germans we, help. Yeah, so that's why it was successful. But we have not had <laughs> since World War II. We had not. We have not done a successful regime change anywhere in the world. We've actually made it worse. Like you can go to Libya and buy a slave right now. The, the only reason why you can buy a slave in Libya right now is because Obama decided to attack Libya. And why did they do that? 
Oh, uh, because he was going to go on the gold standard. He was amassing gold. And where did yeah. the gold go? Uh, it pro- the reality is, I bet the French took it. The French. The French. Because the, the French were the French were actually more interested in Libya than we were, and that is why when Obama agreed to uh, use airstrikes against against Libyan targets, we didn't send ground troops because it was always going to end up back under French control and the French don't have the capability to control anything anymore. And that's why it is a total fucking shit show over there. They say that the the slave trade is bigger than it's ever been. Like it's, it's literally when you see pictures of slaves building the pyramids and shit in Bible movies and stuff, it's of that proportion slave trade in, in Libya. They're even finding like a U.S. citizen yeah. white kids. Well, it, it's, it Libya. has to do with mass migration and, in order to get to Europe, people are passing through Libya. And when they get to Libya, the Libyans are like, come here, come hang out over here. We, we got, a, we have a perfect way for you to get to Europe. And it's, it's just a slave trade and not in it again. It's not like sex trafficking. It's a slave trade. They are actually taking people to auctions and auctioning them off for a dollar value. Yeah. I mean, it, it is also sex yeah, I mean, there are sex trafficking, but yeah, that's the girls a, aren't going out working. Th- that's a different. That's a different animal. Yeah. So, what? I don't know. We have the best navy in the world, and no country could go against a carrier group without a nuclear weapon. Hundred percent true. None. The Brits don't. I mean, the, the truth of the matter is, there's a reason why. Um, the world is the way it is, and it's because the U.S. Navy protects the trade routes. Without us, the world, literally, without Navy forces out in the world, and, it, and again, I'm not, I was not in the Navy, Department of, um, without the Navy protecting those, those trade routes, the world would be a really different place. Because so, most countries in this world actually hate each other. And when you put an aircraft carrier off the coast, they're like, okay, you can have our beanie babies. Why do they hate each other? Uh, it's just, we, we, you know, the reality is we're tribal in nature and tribes hate each other. So would that be racism? In some places it's racism, but I mean, it's just tribalism. It's people hating each other because they're from the wrong tribe. How far do you think we are? You think you'll ever see that the Navy stop enforcing those? Yeah, we're going to shrink. The, the U S Navy is going to shrink because the, the recruitment is not there. And the, the, uh, child birth rate in the United States is an all time low. So it's going to be harder and harder to get personnel to join the Navy um, or any service in general. That doesn't have to be the Navy. Everybody's going to have a hard time. How long until that becomes mainstream? It's already happening right now. More important to have ground troops or Navy? Like if they're going to, if they're going to do a draft, where are they going to send those bodies? I would think that, uh, I would think that it's more important currently to have a Navy because you can't, you know, you can't flex. If you got, you know, if you got guys on, if you got guys in California throwing rocks at China, it doesn't do you any good. But if you got an aircraft carrier, or you got a, a carrier group, you got a carrier group, which we have a lot of them, um, you can flex muscle without the, – the key there is strategically you can flex muscle with a carrier group without actually having to drop a single bomb. Just the mere threat of U.S. carrier groups showing up on people's doorsteps gets them to change their mind. So – Having carrier groups is essential. Um, I think that the, the the Department of Defense should go back to uh, MUS. That the, they should force the Marine Corps to go back to heavy, heavy MUS, where the MUS are everywhere. Because again, if you think about the '90s, that's all we did was flex muscle by having amphibious amphibious Marine groups and carrier groups showing off, showing up off the coast of Bubulafufu, and then suddenly everybody was like, yeah, shit, we're not going to fuck That's with That's Marine you. Expeditionary Unit. Yeah, Ma- Marine Expeditionary Units. Uh, I, would like, I would like them to reinstitute the, the MUSOC program and start sending MUSOCs, probably two MUSOCs. Uh, you should, instead of just one, they should have two MUSOCs in the Pacific. In the same area. Same area. Because it's, it's a big ocean. Yeah, I think they should, I think they should increase the... Uh, Increase the amount of flotilla because it's all about force projection. It really is about force projection. Now, it doesn't matter how many doesn't how many it doesn't matter how many tank battalions you have if they're in conus. Now a Mew doesn't have 
jets, right? It doesn't have an aircraft carrier. Well, it has the uh, so it'll it have has the, the helicopter carrier. It'll have the helicopter carrier, and the helicopter carriers all have the F thirty fives. Oh, okay. So the VTO, the maybe that's wrong. I don't know if it's the F thirty five, but it's the it's the VTO version. And those of are the Marine Stil- Corps pilots. Those will be Marine Corps pilots, yeah. Who are actually naval aviators? Sorry, Marines. <laughs> um, but yeah, so it's just about force pro- projection. Um, so where would you send your mute right now? Well, we need to be, we need to be more, the truth of the matter is they're kind of doing it. We need to be more seen and louder in the Pacific theater. So China is our biggest threat. And right now, I don't know if you guys have seen it, but like Chinese coast guard, (laughs) but like Chinese coast guard ships and Japanese and no Filipino ships are actually crashing in each other. Uh, they're, they're. So remember when I war. remember when I talked about that in the Coast Guard yeah. going out there having to get in the middle mm-hmm. of the Filipino ships a couple months ago I mentioned that, and they were also saying that the all the crab is missing at yeah. the, in the same the same, same thing area, I yeah. heard yeah, about. It's that. probably just overfishing, but who knows? Or it's aliens because they do live under the ocean. But Japan just this year changed their rules of engagement. So Japan has always had a non-aggression, uh, like non-aggression rules for the for their military. Their military was not allowed to, uh, they weren't really allowed to fire guns in self-defense. So it basically had to be like, you know, uh, you know, if a Chinese ship fired on a Japanese ship, the Japanese ship would be like, hey guys, they're firing at us. You, can we shoot back? It would be one of those things, a hard rule of engagement, and that they just changed their constitution to where now Japanese ships without without uh, permission can now fire in self defense against Chinese vessels. So, I said this I don't know, probably a year ago. We've been talking about uh, China and you know the U.S. going to war with China. It will be the Japanese that it will be the Japanese that punch China in the face and get us into a war, and then we will come to the aid of Japan. So has with them changing the rules of engagement, has that changed anything in the water? Hasn't changed anything yet. I mean, they haven't tested it. No, the Japanese have been sending their, uh, their coast guard vessels into the, into the area that everybody's fighting over. And initially the Chinese. So the, the problem they have is the Chinese, when we talk about the Chinese has the biggest Navy in the world, part of the Chinese Navy is just fishing boats. And so the Chinese have all these, fishing boats that are in waters that they're not supposed to be. And they will use those fishing boats to ram other fishing boats. And so they're using them as a weapon, even though they don't have weapons. Japanese go out there. Japanese change their rules and say, Hey, you know, you, if you attack us, we're going to shoot you out of the water. Now the Chinese are actually sending Chinese coast guard boats out there. So it's, I mean, I've seen videos of Chinese and Japanese coast guard boats like like it's Daytona and they're smashing into each other rubbing paint um it's only a matter of time before someone fuck around and find yes yeah, before someone is like fire a torpedo <clears throat> so what's the repercussions when a Japanese vessel sinks a Chinese vessel it will it will 100 percent depend on what the, what the Chinese response is if the Chinese response is um military if it's if it's a military response the Japanese are going to punch them in the nose super hard. They're not ready. They, the Chi- even the Chinese know. Especially since we're giving them tomahawks. The the Chinese have Aegis... The, I mean, I'm sorry. The Japanese have our Aegis class cruisers. Um, they know that... The Chinese know that... Maybe they could hurt... Maybe they could kind of hurt the Japanese Navy. Aegis the, class cruisers. You mean missile guided yeah. missile cruisers? So they can already touch the fucking. Yeah. They can already knock fucking China. So they would put. They would hurt China. The question is, like I will tell you the smart answer. The smart answer is, uh, Japan or China uh, gets Japan to sink one of their ships. So they they force an issue where China do, do a Pearl Harbor where Japan sinks one of their ships. And the smart answer would be to diplomatically blow that up in the world scheme of things. Meaning, you know, uh, hey, we're just we're just out fishing. We we no ill will towards the Japanese, and they're just out here sinking ships and shit. That would be the smart play: is to corral Japan through diplomatic means. 
but I don't think the Chinese, I don't think the Chinese have the ability to do that. I think they would, you would have a military response that would come with a wink from the president and then the Japanese would respond in kind and it would not bode well for the Chinese. They don't, again, it's all, it's all about your, it's all about the technology and getting your weapon system where the weapon system needs to be. And we are the best at that. And the Japanese are even better at that. So as good as our, as good as our Aegis class cruisers are, which we're getting ready to mothball, a Japanese crewed Aegis cruiser is even better because they're, Let's just be real. They're more disciplined guys. So they're, they're better. And so the Chinese would get shellacked. Like they would get it. It, it's, it would almost be neat to see just because how bad the Chinese would get boo-booed. Um, the, the problem for Japan is what the response to the homeland would be. Cause the, G, the Chinese have a capability of, of firing things that the, that the Japanese wouldn't be able to reach wouldn't be able to retaliate against. You don't think we've they could hit that. Tokyo. You don't think they have that defense system like Israel. I mean, has. they they probably do, but it, uh, the Iron Dome or whatever. Yeah, the the Iron Dome is a the Iron Dome works uniquely in Israel because of how small it is. It's a it's a that that Iron Dome is a small dome, and it that's it's very hard for you to fire missiles into a small target because they're all going to the same place. Where uh, Japan's a little bit bigger. And I don't believe that the home island is controlled by the Iron Dome. Uh, the crew, the Aegis class cruisers, could shoot down uh, a lot, but that also depends on whether or not they've used that ordinance to take out Chinese naval vessels. So, um, and would then those, would those be the same ordinance? It, they're similar. So why don't we just put a couple extra ships out there? Because we we just don't have them. We just don't. We don't have the. We don't have the ships. Like we're at, we're at a point where it's a come as you are war, where whatever you have on deck is what you're going to have. You're not going to be, you know, the 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 videos of World War II where Louisiana's putting out a troop ship every 24 hours. That's not going to happen in the next one. It's going to be because we don't have the bodies, or we don't have the knowledge. We don't have what the technology is. the The technology is too great, and we'll be able to destroy all those assets before anybody could even use. You know, it, the reality is, if it's if it's a full global war, meaning if the if the Chinese response to the Japanese Navy is a nuclear weapon that takes out the Japanese ships, it, it takes too long to build them. Like it, it, the war is over. It takes too long to build them. You can't, you can't uh, throw a keel down and make another ship. It's it is the come as you are. It's just like the F thirty five Raptors and shit. Um, if the Chinese come out with some sort of wonder weapon that they totally don't have that can find those aircraft and shoot them down, we're not making new ones. We're just getting, we're going to be like, okay, Air Force, I guess you're going to fly in there with F-15s. So if we had a war like that, it's probably, it's, it's definitely going to be multi-front, right? Uh, you would think so, but. And then somebody, they're going to, somebody's going to th- launch something at the United States or a lot of something. Maybe. Okay. So. All the all the tip of the spear weapons are destroyed, right? If they EMP them or whatever happens, and we can't use them, at that point somebody's going to try to invade the United States. Who is no. that? No, no, no one has the no. There is no country in the world, contrary to what the lying Department of Defense tells you, there's no country in the world that has the lift capability. Well, okay, I take it back. Mexico, Mexico can invade, but they don't have the army to do it. Can it invade? But they don't have the army to do it. Did you see the shootouts in Mexico a couple of days ago? Uh, no. Do you see the? Do you see them trying to shoot down airplanes? The cartel <laughs> got in a gunfight with the Mexican arm, with yeah. the Mexican Air Force. There was three engagements simultaneously um, that had to do with cartels. I believe it was different cartels on the same day, or that's how the media looked, made it look. Uh-huh. And they were coming after. They were bringing gunships in, like armed helicopters, and fucking lighting up the cartel. Oh, greatest video I've ever seen was a um, little bird there's a video uh, there's a video of a little bird flying over I believe it was Juarez so downtown Juarez like just imagine downtown your home this city. was a while ago right yeah this was a while ago downtown your home city and this little bird just doing circles with a minigun and just and, and you can see the gunner going yeah just just hosing that minigun into town 
to kill one cartel leader. Imagine all the other people that got hit that day. Um, unbelievable. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a real war. I mean, the reality is more people died, more people are dying right now in Mexico with the drug war than all the people that died in the Iraq invasion. It's, it's a real, they, they, they've got a real war on their hands. I mean, you know, when they got, uh, El Chapo's, is it El Chapo? It might've been El I, I might have the guy wrong, but I think it was El Chapo's son. When they, when they got El Chapo's son, arrested him and took him into custody. They let him go. They were immediately surrounded yep. by a far superior, by far superior numbers. Said we, like they were in their they, base. They had, they had the other guy's family members. Yeah. They, well, cause what, what, the way it works down there is if you, you know, you're, your, you live in a compound, your family lives in a compound. And so what the, what they did is they surrounded both compounds and then they came, they went to the military compound and they said, here, and the dude opened the letter and he's like, and it was basically, we're not going to attack you, but we are going to level the compound where your families live. We're, we're there too. And, and they handed him over. They just okay, fuck it. Here you go. I'm surprised they didn't kill him at that point, anyways. Once they got their guy, I mean, you have to have a there's a there's a kind of a balance of things, right? You have to have a you have to have a certain balance. It's like the you re- have to leave them with hope. The reason why the reason why Mexico is such a shit show is because we decided we were going to go down there and chop off a bunch of heads thinking that the snake would die. But the problem is in Mexico, those snakes don't die. They just break up into smaller snakes and make smaller groups. And they're all fighting against each other. You mean like JTF six when 19th and 20th was down there? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the Zetas, the, the reality is the, the, the Zeta drug cartel is a bunch of fucking knuckle dragging Mexican army guys that we trained here in the United States in Arkansas. Arkansas, but they went to, you know, Fort Bragg. They went to all the Bill Clinton. Uh, yeah. Uh, the, we trained those guys and, you know, you can't like the reality is Superman would never do. If Superman had to survive on Clark Kent's, like what Clark Kent was making, he wouldn't have been doing good. He'd have been robbing banks and shit. Right. We, we tend to, we, we tend to not understand that, you know, Humans are just humans. And so they trained all these knuckle draggers to be fucking knuckle draggers. And then they went back and started working it on a fucking Mexican government salary. That wasn't shit. The reality, the reality is what they should have done is because the U S spent all the time and money to train those guys to go after the cartel is we should have been paying them. They should have been getting salary from us and maybe some nuggets from the Mexican government, whatever, but we should have been paying them. We should have been kept. We should have kept them in the United States. We should have kept them in the United States on a United States facility. And those motherfuckers should have been flying out of American airspace into Mexico to take those cartel guys down. And then when they came home where their families would be in the United States, why there would still happen? be there would still be corruption, but it would be less corruption than what it turned out to be. Why did we not do that? Because we're, yeah, I mean, we half ass everything. You you can't. The federal government half asses everything. They don't they don't ever uh, follow through anything with anything. Wasn't Bin Laden our boy for a while? Yes, Bin Laden. We trained and we trained Bin Laden and all his guys and gave him Stinger missiles. So why do we keep making the same mistakes? Uh, because we have a high rotation in uh, we have a we have a high rotation in <laughs> Washington. So we keep cycling these motherfuckers through Washington, and everybody thinks they need to make their mark. You don't think it's part and of it, the game plan? We, we no, train no, them, it's, use it's, them, and then create you know, them as a boogeyman so we they, can keep perpetually going. When things when things go for a long time, so if if I have a if I have an operational idea, and I say I have an operational idea, and I say it's going to take six months, and if that operational idea takes six months, it's probably going to be pretty good. But if I have an operational idea that has no end date, it's going to be a soup sandwich because you're going to run into a bunch of issues. First off, in four years, I might not be there anymore. So I have to hand this program off to somebody. I got to hand this off to you. And you are going to come in and go, 
fuck, we've been running this program for four years. It's dog shit. We need to do something else. So you're going to tweak the program. And then eventually some bean puller is going to see that you've tweaked the program and now it costs us more money. He's like, this is fucking costing us too much money. We're not spending that kind of money. So no, you have to reduce the program. Now I'm bin Laden living in a cave and I've been fucking firing missiles and shooting down hind D's for you for the last 10 years. And you're like, bro, sorry, we got to cut you loose. We're not going to give you any more money. Well, of course you're going to be fucking mad. <laughs> I mean, you, of course you're going to be, and you have, not now you that, have, we're not going to give you any fucking support or protection. Yeah, now you have all this training, you have all this equipment. What, what are you going to do? You're going to try and overthrow the country that you're in, or you're going to try and overthrow another country or you're going to be a thorn in America's side. Yeah. It's, it's a, it's a shit sandwich. We don't learn from our mistakes. I mean, they tried to, the reality is the last time I was in Iraq, the army was pushing coin. Now coin is, coin is a term that came out in Vietnam. It's winning hearts and minds. It's if you win their hearts and minds, you will, you What's will it succeed stand for. Uh, I don't off the top of my head. I don't remember. Somebody put in notes what that stands for. Yeah, go ahead. I'm not going to read it, but, um, they started pushing coin again, which is it's hearts and minds. It's from, it's from Vietnam. They were actually handing out fucking flyers, flyers. from goddamn Vietnam. <coughs> and the problem with that is, it didn't work in Vietnam. Why do you think it's going to work in Afghanistan? That's the thing. People just regurgitate the same boring shit. Uh, and then, you know, the reality is I am sure that coin, when they transitioned to coin, there were U S forces that were killed because of that stupid idea. Have you seen all the, <coughs> have you seen gas explosions in the United States? Uh, not gas. Ex- I mean, not gas explosions. There's been, yeah, there's a lot of gas explosions. Like, looks like i mean i haven't been really close to a drone strike but it looks like what i would think a drone strike looks like how about uh didn't you have a neighbor's house blow up lately mm-hmm. did it look like a yeah, missile strike did it look like a rocket uh-huh. found out that she was on her carport and lit a fire in a trash can that caught her house on fire and blew up the gas and blew her roof off the house but how they much, said how much fucking gas has to be in the house for she, that to happen? Not a she lot. She said that she did it because it, the house was possessed, and then she said to the cops that I'm on a ton of meth, and they arrested her. Yeah, uh, you don't ha- you don't have to actually have a lot of gas inside a house in order to blow the roof off. Okay, so I have a I have a standing pilot light commercial mm-hmm. gas range in mm-hmm. there. There's six burners on it. There's always a flame. Mm-hmm. And when we first put it in, I didn't really trust it right so i had to i just turn the thing off so then every time we'd come back i'd have to turn the gas on and but the one underneath is kind of a bitch to light right for the stove well what was happening that i didn't realize was happening after i'm like okay this building hasn't blown up in a couple months like maybe it was weeks right i can stop doing this sebastian was blowing the pilot lights out yeah so the building the kitchen was full of gas the building you'd come we'd leave to nashville come back I'm like, man, I smell gas, and this burner's out. So we'd light him, and we're like, something's wrong with this. Well, finally, he fesses up to it. He's like, well, I was just worried about the, the thing burning, right? Well, it's pumping gas in. We never blew up. You got you got a big building, though. You got a big building. I mean, maybe if you, you know if you uh, if you were a smoker and you walked in the kitchen, you you might have you might have puffed out. But you got a pretty big building, and and the reality is, even. Even if you have a lot of, like, you could fill your room up, you could fill your building up with gas, there still has to be an ignition source. Would the United States government use a rocket against citizens in the United States? Would they? Of course they would. <laughs> the right, if you give yourself the right circumstances, of course they would. And have they? I, I can't answer that question. I don't, I don't know of anything. I don't, AT&T Dale building, Christmas Eve? No, that was... It was not that a was, fucking RV with some propane tanks. That no was fucking way. That was, was actually it? a. That was actually a. Here's here's the thing, John. I want you to think about this. Okay. the the quieter the 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 quieter the story is, the the quicker the story disappears. The more based in reality the story is, so, um. That was a wackadoo. It was a you dude. think a dude in the RV? Yeah, hundred percent. And they had it solved within like eight hours. Well, it's because the it, it's because the dude. Okay, the 
the the dude in particular, it it wasn't like a okay, he wasn't trying to be a mystery. They knew, okay, literally people knew that he was doing something like that when he was doing it. Like it it was one of those things where you're it was one of those things where where his, the neighbors were like putting a lot of propane in that trailer, aren't you, Bill? Got to keep it warm. You know, it was one of those it was one of those scenarios where once it happened, like once it happened, there wasn't anybody they talked to about him that that went, <gasps> "I'm shocked." They were, always knew that guy was a they, they were, it, With that incident, everybody was like, knew it. Knew he was going to do something like that. Really? The AT&T building? Mm. Mm-mm-mm. Yeah, it, that was because you have to understand, government likes crisis, okay? So I want you to think about this. Government likes crisis. So in order to create crisis, you need people to actually die. Okay, you need chaos. You need people to be afraid. This dude drove his van down there and then hit the button on his fucking PA system and spent 15 minutes telling everybody, this is a bomb. It's going to go off. You need to get the fuck out of here. Wasn't there a second one after he had already blew that up? There was another vehicle that had a fucking recording in it and shit. I don't know. I, I just, it just, again, it, the CIA, would the CIA, if the CIA was going to do it, they would have done it on Broadway and they would have done it. Like, in the middle of Broadway season. Do you think that's why so many of these active shooters have already had FBI contact? The FBI had them in custody or had them on the radar or it's in, the, it's in their deal? Like, we just had another shooting, and he was, again, the FBI had him. I, I, I think it's one of those, I think it's one of those that, like, crazy people. So when you're talking about people that, when you are talking about people that are on the left and that have a fucking genuine screw loose... Law enforcement makes contact with them all the time. Like they make contact with them all the time. It's not. It's not like they don't. It's not like uh, uh, the Unabomber where he's hiding out in the mountains. These guys are at their home. They've already threatened their mother with a knife. They've already done all this other crazy shit. Where law enforcement is like, well, we can't. We can't really do anything about it. He he's not done anything yet, and that's the problem. Is we're at a place where. Um, we know that these people are fucking crazy, but we can't do anything about it till they actually do something super crazy. Did you hear about this six-year-old that brought a gun to school and yeah, shot, shot his teacher? teacher? Yeah, Whose gun was it? Do we know? I don't know. I, I For some reason, because the way they explain it seems so, it seems kind of weird. I almost think it was the teacher's gun. But again, when I see those things, sorry, YouTube, I don't even watch them because Again, it's it's a parent teacher. It's a parent societal problem. Um, I don't care that a gun was used. He could have he could have easily stabbed her in the eye with a pencil. You've seen all these. You've seen all these attacks on power stations. Yeah. Do you know there's another one? Yeah, you sent me that thing about the. Did the, you actually watch it? Uh huh. Yeah. So you, what this said was there is a man named Muhammad mm -hmm. who drove his car from Idaho to Las Vegas. And out in the desert behind MGM Grand is a giant solar farm. They call it like it's a it's you know a mega you, facility or something. You know when you come, when, you know when you're going into Vegas and you come down that you you state you, line. You come around the corner and you go down state and you line. First see it, yeah. That's where it's at. It's a huge, huge facility. Um, it's a very big facility. So he brings his. I I, I have Lexus in my head. He he drives from Idaho to ne Nevada. There, mm -hmm. rams his car through the gate siphons fuel from the car doesn't have a fuel cell yeah. not a gas can S siphons gas out of the car onto the transformers or some power p pieces lights it on fire pulls out a lawn chair watches the motherfucker burn i understand that he lit his car on fire also and then walked away into the desert they capture him the power facility was owned by MGM, and it powered the MGM Grand and several other MGM properties. And this thing is completely offline. It has shut down all the power, so they're no longer producing their own power. They've had to, I, I would assume they just flip a switch and everything's back on grid power. Um, they have him in custody, and they're saying that it's offline for two to three years, millions of dollars in damage. They can't get the parts to even fucking put this thing back together right, right now. 
and you haven't heard a single word mainstream media about this. You, Guys you, from man from Iran. Because you have a uh, you have a lot of you have a lot of things going on right there that you have a lot of things that go on right there that does not fit the mainstream narrative. First off, we're talking about green energy, so that's taboo as fuck. Because what we what we don't want to happen, what we don't want to happen is mainstream media to look into that facility. We don't want them to look into that facility and see what's really going on at that facility and understand how big and how much money they spent on it. We don't want them to do that. And uh, and then you have the particular attacker. You're not allowed. Who is not a right-wing white guy. Well, the reality not is. Not a Trump guy. The reality Maybe is. Maybe he is a Trump guy. Uh, for for 10 years, uh, we've had a, a official, an official federal government um, hush order on anything that has to do with Muslims. So that's a, that's an official, like if, if, uh, if a Muslim gentleman goes into a school and shoots the school up, law enforcement is not allowed to point that out. Why? Because we're, we're kinder gentler and we don't want people to get mad at Muslims. What if it's a white Muslim guy? Uh, it, well, it doesn't matter if he's Muslim hush order. If he's a white dude from fucking Arkansas, go ahead and blast him up. And I think that's the interesting thing about uh, all the all the um, power station attacks. All the power when it you know five years from now when it's all said and done, all the power all the power attacks are going to be all the power attacks that's going to come out are going to be uh, leftists, leftists that are trying to save the world by attacking these uh, power companies. No different than in the eighties when those people were going through the the car lots and uh, you know. Fucking up all the Humvees. Oh, yeah, because that, they were because they were gas guzzlers. Yeah, gas guzzlers. Uh, it's gonna it's gonna be lefties. It's gonna be misguided lefties that are out there uh, destroying the power grid in order to uh, save the world, and that's why we're not hearing about it. That's it, the reality is that's why we are not hearing about it because the left is in control of the narrative right now, so they're not gonna they're not gonna preach it. Same thing with the fucking thing at the the power station that you know Mohammed and the power station. They're not going to push that narrative because, one, the reality is if you do any, just a hint, a hint of investigation, that power station is a great big boondockle. It's not It's not producing the electricity that they told it would produce. So you think it's, it's an not, insurance claim? No, but think about it. We don't have the parts to fix it. We don't, we can't. It's going to be offline. So that's happening right? in so, a lot of these places. So I mean, how many how many power station attacks have you heard of? Like, what's in your head? It's right pretty now? big. Like 156. 126 is the number yeah. that I heard. But but mainstream media, you've heard four or five. Because yeah. it because it, it's uh, again, I think it's it's on it's the left, and they're attacking these facilities in order to save the planet. And you cannot put that out there when you are the ones running the narrative. You know, because because think about it. The reality is. If a couple of rednecks from fucking Georgia drove their pickup truck into a power station and took it out, we'd know where they live. We'd know who their cousins were. We'd know. We'd know it all. We right, would know have, all. And you, you don't hear you would just shit look at the about Google satellite. Yeah. You'd fucking follow you, the truck. Fucking mm, where you it don't, came from. You don't hear any of that bullshit when it comes to these. They, they have no How about no leads whatsoever. How about geofencing. I mean, anything happens in a fucking shopping mall. They they ping every cell phone that was there when it happened, and then they just deductive reason it. Yeah, I, don't, I mean, I don't know. All right, we're running kind of long. Are Let's, we? Uh, Where are we at? Two hours? Yeah. You Okay, you yeah. have some new neighbors. Do I? No, this is... This okay, is I got new neighbors. You got new neighbors just moved from California. Moved from California. And they've got a... They drive a Saturn. They drive a Saturn. Not a Saturn. What's the electric car? That's the car that... Tesla. They drive, they drive a, Tesla. a Tesla. Tesla. They got a Tesla. Okay. They moved here and they they have two Teslas. And they're like, Jeff, we, we want to be normal Tennessee residents. We bought a gun. I want to buy a military vehicle. What would what should their first military vehicle be? LMTV. Really? Out of everything? For, LMTV. For two yeah. guys with... Oh, I'm, I'm assuming they're genders. Two, a man and a woman with a, a Tesla. Well, they did come from California. So okay. LMTV, because it's bigger than a Humvee, but it's not as big as a five ton, right? It's, it's, 
It's kind of a happy medium. It's way more usable. It's probably more comfortable. No, no. LMTV is, uh, I mean, the reality is five tons and LMTVs are not really usable. <laughs> but a five ton, but the LMTV is more modern than a five ton. Uh, no, I mean, they make the, well, oh, I'm, I guess they're I'm seven talking tons now. Vietnam deuce and a half. Yeah, you're, you're thinking deuce and a half. But I mean, the, the deuce and a halves with the multi fuel, you can put a, uh, uh, you know, 50 gallon tank in the back of those, fill that up with, regular old motor oil that you get from your local motor oil place start that bitch up with start Why that bunch of that cheaper yeah like so buy no, motor you, oil? you don't buy motor oil you go to bill's automotive motor you oil. get his used motor oil you put it in that tank you start that multi-fuel engine up with your diesel tank will bill flip, give you that flip a switch drive down the road yeah they'll give it to you especially around here it's crazy i i would never think of going to a tire place in california and be like hey i need your tires here they don't care they're like yeah. go pick those tires yeah you want pay, those tires they have to pay to have yeah. them removed you want those tires you can have those tires yeah but fuel's different so we have a friend that had a he doesn't own it anymore but he heated his whole shop off of used motor oil yeah so they didn't they didn't have a problem getting rid of their used motor yeah oil. i mean i mean you don't even need to the reality is it doesn't have to be used motor oil you could go to your local mcdonald's and you could tell your mcdonald's franchise owner hey i want all your fry grease and he's going to be like, really? You want my fry greens? I think, I think that ship sailed, man. I think oh. all the biodiesel guys are after that ship. No, they, there's there's not enough. The reality is there's too many McDonald's and there's not enough people running around on fry greens. So I guarantee you that there's nobody over here at this McDonald's in, in Camden that is collecting that for their own personal use. Isn't there a LMTV that's multi-fuel? No, no. None? No multi-fuel LMTVs. The multi-fuel, the multi-fuel uh, fuel vehicles have sailed. Now you can take a you can take a diesel and make it you have to really really the difference is on those multi fuel engines you literally can you can put kerosene in there you can put vegetable oil in there you can put motor oil in there you can literally change a couple filters and it is going to run like a fucking piece of shit but you could put regular gasoline in there the new engines are more refined. Now the LMTV has the least electronic engine, uh, but it's still got a lot of shit that that stuff has to go through. So if you're going to use those type of fuels, you have to filter the shit out of it. What are my options other than Vietnam era deuce and a half that'll that'll do that? I mean, uh, Unimogs will do it, won't they? Nope. Because that's a six. Some of the, most of those Unimogs are like 1963. Yeah, but it's it, the the that engine was specifically that. Oh, that's a gasoline motor. That anyways. that military engine was specifically made to run off of whatever the battlefield provided them. Yeah, and those Unimogs were 2.3 uh, Mercedes fuel motors. So there was very fuel diesel Unimogs. Yeah, that's I don't. A diesel. Mine is a diesel. Yes. So. Nothing. I have to get a deuce and a half to be able to run. A, well, I am sure. Motor. I am, you okay. If you were cheap, or not cheap, if you were poor like me, Elon, I don't know what we're doing about this tank thing. Um, if you were poor like me, then deuce and a half would be the way to go. But if you had money, and if you had money, then you could get a, uh, you know, like, I don't want to, I'm going to say the diesel brothers, but you could get a reputable diesel mechanic to where they could take like a, a brand new 321 or some other diesel engine and not, tweak it out. Not and reputable. Tweak it out and do some stuff and put a pin underneath there so and weld know, something and then you'd be able to run. So you know they hit the diesel it. brothers for millions of dollars yeah, for detuning those motors. Yeah. And they've been going after dudes left and right. Like, yeah. Like insane well, EPA over this bullshit. Again, guys, you don't, when you're, when you're doing something that, when you're doing something that the government frowns upon, you don't put it on fucking YouTube. Yeah, they made millions of dollars, but eventually... They're going to come get you. I just saw one, a dude that <laughs> I just saw a YouTube video the other day where a dude, uh, normal business. He owns a gym, you know, for the last 10 years, he's been, he's been, uh, he's been, uh, just doing gym stuff, like bringing in high clients and doing all this shit. And he's got all these fancy cars. Well, when he was younger, he liked to fucking spin those tires. They, they hit him for some shit in 20... Yeah, I just yeah. watched that video. Yeah. And so the the fucking... The door kickers come the and... SWAT team. Yeah. And kick his door open for some shit that happened 
you know, about 15, or not 15, probably 10 years earlier. Yeah, there's got to be a statute of limitations. Uh-uh. Well, because here's the problem. They just found it, so now. The, yeah, they just found it, and so they're like, oh, this motherfucker is out street racing. And so they kick in his door, and he's now a dodge he's, guy. he's going to have to go through all this legal hassle and bullshit. In the end, uh, he'll probably get a misdemeanor and pay some stupid fine, but the reality is they charged him for reckless endangerment and something else that, as a police officer... Like you're just in your your squad car, and you're like, hey, oh, we gotta go see, we gotta go get Brandle because, holy shit, he's a fucking you know reckless and dangerous. There was something about uh, possible bodily harm, but the way they wrote it up, it made it sound like this guy was evil. They right? sent the SWAT team to his yeah. house. His wife was home. He wasn't home. How the fuck do they not know where and, this dude is? And every every cop, because like he knew some of them because they were they would go to his gym, and yeah. every one of them he asked, he's like what is this about? And they're like, we don't know. It's just this right here. That's why we're arresting you. All right. So, I mean, again, that's a classic example of if they want to come get you, they're going to come get you, even if they have to search your social media. But you know, the reality is don't post everything on social media. I just watched a really good movie about, <laughs> about these old British gangsters and this, they they've all kind of, these gangsters have all retired and there's like a new young breed that's running around the neighborhood and they're just fucking people up to fuck people up. Right. They're just, they see you on the street. They're going to fuck you up and they're beating all these people up. And so the neighborhood's all upset. Well, one of the gangsters, he's in, he's in his bar and he's, he's like a, um, he's like a love connector. Now he connects people together and he's old. He's in his sixties probably. And he hears some shit going on out behind the bar and this crew, the E2 crew, they are, um, attempting to rape this girl. And so he gets in the middle of it and he's like, Hey, prep, prep, prep. what are you doing? Girl takes off running. They beat the shit out of him and kill him. The gangster. Yeah. The gangster. They beat the shit out of him and kill him. Cause there's a lot of them. Right. You know, they're like cockroaches. This is what happens when you kill all the bull elephants. Yeah. The cockroaches. And so finally, you know, his brother finds out about it cause his brother's, his brother's in Spain. He's quit the, quit the job and comes back for the funeral and regulates um, and regulates. But the, the way they are able to regulate this, and this is what kids do these days, even you can find these on the internet right now, all the fight videos, is they just posted it on YouTube. And so they're just like, who's this kid? Who's this kid? And mm-hmm. they just find them all and, and do their justice. But, yeah, you, you can't. Like World Star. I mean, I get it. You know, Diesel Brothers went from, he went from making one little truck mod to buying a goddamn Black Hawk helicopter. So you know how they actually started. They didn't start doing diesel stuff they started they bought they they went to do a demolition job on like a block wall and they rented a tractor and they said hey this tractor stuff's easier than this block wall stuff so they ended up they did some jobs they rented machines did some jobs and in a couple months bought a tractor and then started doing jobs they started doing equipment that's why he has so much equipment Mm -hmm. like that's that's really his thing well, and I, bet. And, and I don't know how they made that go away. I'm sure they paid some fines and shit, and they've shut down Diesel Brothers. But that's why they have like his YouTube channel within a period of a year. Yeah, I'll bet. I'll bet the the construction stuff's not paying the money that the damn YouTube. Correct. Is. Correct. Yeah. Correct. The YouTube is what's. Yeah, and that's the conversation we just yeah. had when we were yeah. we were talking oh, yeah. to this guy. Yeah. In here. YouTube. You, I mean, if you if you have the capability of creating some something that can go viral on YouTube, you're gonna you're gonna make more money than you can imagine just look at uh and he, and not to say that he hasn't worked hard but uh grantham you know grantham's channel it's really jumped in the, the last dude, few months the dude has the dude has put the time in but he's also making fucking bank all those guys are yeah million a month i mean that's what they say tim tim cast with his dude that left or whatever was saying we were making a million a month when he was still there yeah on the, the Tim cast, that's just IRL. That's not even the other channels. And now he's building coffee shops. They're setting up a, a venue, a brand new venue. They've got a, a place that's got a fucking gun range and shit in it. Yeah. Um, I saw, you know, I, I, all the money I spent super chat. Hey, you need to come train out here. Attack response. I spent thousands of dollars and he finally read one of them, right? He went and trained with American gun chick. She, she was out there and she took him shooting, but I mean, his terminology's changed. You can <laughs> tell, that somebody has been around him yeah. because he threw some shit out the other night and his vocabulary has definitely changed. But the, that, and that's the thing. We got a buddy that's starting. He, he, he actually ran the bulldozer here and put the motocross track in here. And he, he comes from a huge motocross, supercross background, but big equipment stuff. Yeah. 
and he they have giant like 350 Komatsu excavators and and big huge huge bulldozers and I said I, go, I know you like doing this how old are you he's like I'm about to be 50 I go I know you like doing this when they demoed the hotel up here there was a 70 year old man in that tractor and when he got out of the tractor he's hunched over like he's just damaged from driving equipment I go what you're going to find I go do this shit while you can build your client yeah. base but you need to document it you have no documentation yeah. you have no social media I go, you do this and just fucking make posts on a daily basis for a year, two years. You're going to find that you're not even going to make your money on the jobs. You're going to make your money on the social media. And then because you have that, you're going to be able to sell merchandise. You're going to be able to sell other things. But your revenue is going to come from just social media. Way more than you're going to make doing the jobs you're doing. Yeah, I wish I I could do something like that. You can. No, I can't. Why can't you? Because I don't have the... I don't have the, ah, I can't, first off, first off, I'm not a, I'm not a baller like John. I can't afford the dude that's behind our camera. Like, and, and I would feel silly. The reality is whatever I could come up with, I would feel silly even him doing it because his shit is so good. Like even this, I, I feel like he must enjoy coming here and listening us to listen to us bullshit because it's really beneath the talent work that, you know, the stuff he does, right? You see the other guy over there? Like, which other guy? That guy on the couch? His, you see that guy? His goddamn scripts takes, are too complicated. Not the scripts. That guy <laughs> takes all that bullshit. You know, I've run over, I've driven over three GoPros. Yeah? Because I put them on the fucking skid steer, and then I'll change implements, and I'll raise it, and I'll forget, I yeah. won't realize that the, the GoPro has fallen over. I was at the gas station. I drove the tr- skid steer over there to put fuel in it. And I hear something, and I kind of feel something. I'm like, what the fuck was that? I get out, and I'm like, what is that, right? So I see the GoPro. I'm like, oh, it's the GoPro. What's all that other shit? It's the flexi arm. It crushed all of that. Broke the, the, the back uh, camera, the back viewer, but the GoPro still turned on. I'm like, cool. Fuck, that's a good ad for GoPro. Yeah. Why, at GoPro, why aren't you? Uh... So I've driven over three of these fucking things because they just fall off. Right. I, just, I just turn the camera on. And he takes my bullshit and turns it into all those on the compound, off the compound videos. Mm-hmm. And he just chops them up. He's like Edward Scissorhands. You can just film your shit and he'll turn it into something. Yeah, you know. But it could, this dude, you about could as, do. This is about as YouTube as I want to get. Why? If you just, I always carry that GoPro eventually- around, right? Because it's, it's got the flexi arm. I just clamp it to shit. And I do my two posts. And then I clamp it to the next two. And whatever, if I'm digging post holes, if I'm driving shit, whatever yeah. it is, I'm just bullshitting. I'm like, give me a sound bite, right? Or say, I'll that's say the, something. I would say that's that would be my biggest my biggest hang up. I was doing I was doing uh, I was doing a period of time where I was shooting the different I was shooting the different guns, just doing a every day. Every day I was shooting a different gun and stuff, and just videotaping it from the perspective of seeing how I'm doing my mag changes and shit like that. And I was doing that, but the fucking, and you know the deal with this, the setup, the, the setup that you have to do eats so much time that it's just like, fuck, it's not even worth it. And then the other, the other key now, obviously you've got a guy, you got a couple of guys. Um, editing is like, you're not going to edit it. You're not going to edit it. He's going to edit it. Ugh. You're not going to edit it. It's just like, oh, I don't even want to turn the camera on and look at what I did. Do you have a GoPro? Uh, No. You know he doesn't because he's saying videotaping. No, no, I have, I have, uh, they're different than GoPro. They're they're like a GoPro knockoff. Yeah, the better than GoPro that costs less. So get a GoPro. They're like better than GoPro. And if you don't want to have to do it over and over, get three GoPros. One at the front of the gun, one behind the gun, right? And one that you're just going to, hey, I'm about to shoot this Swazoo 55. And then you just shoot it, and it, it does it, right? And then you take, you just have to take that shit right there and pop those SD cards one at a time mm-hmm. into your computer, and you drag that file over to this hard drive. And then when you come here, you drop your hard drive off for the week. You give it to him, and he chops that shit together. Okay? No, I hear you. Hold on, I'm hold hearing. on. I hear you. He chops it together, and just once a week, and here's how you get away with it, right? Because YouTube's going to unmonetize you. You're, maybe you post it, maybe you don't post it to YouTube. We put it on Rumble, and you take the link from Rumble, 
and you share it, and he could do this. You take the link from Rumble, you share it on Facebook, and you what put is it, Rumble? It, it's it's just like YouTube. It's not really. It's 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 YouTube light, but it's monetized. You can say anything you want. It's, like oh, like YouTube used to be. Yes, just mm, like imagine that. that YouTube. And here's here's the thing with Rumble. back when you were America. And you can do also. There's there's Rumble. There's a few others also. Rumble doesn't ding you for anything. And Rumble, we don't even load to Rumble. We load to YouTube, and it auto posts to Rumble. Rumble. So then you take the link from Rumble and you put it on Facebook because Facebook, if you put the material there organically, like Facebook will, you know, strike you or remove it. Right. You put the link there, it auto populates it and just shows it as a video as though you posted the YouTube video. They don't. They don't ding it. Hmm. And it's all about getting the traffic to Rumble. So you're going to put it on Facebook, Instagram. TikTok, all of those, right? Now, you can't put a link on Instagram, so you put a link in bio. You just put, here's the video, link in bio if they want to see it or right. whatever. So you just, you put a thumbnail on Instagram, picture of the video, the front page of the video that you're going to see like you would on YouTube, screenshot that, put it on Instagram, and then in Instagram for your bio, you don't even have to do that. You can just put a link to like Linktree, and in Linktree, you have... Hey, buy, buy Scully. This is the pair of underwear I want. This is the bra and panties I want. You want to tip me? Like, it's all these all these cam mm-hmm. girls have all this shit. Yeah. But, and I know that this sounds like a lot right now. But them dudes could set that shit up in fucking 20 minutes. All you have to do, all you have to do is shoot a different gun every day. Or every week. And why, why don't we do Scully Jesus? You totally should do fucking Scully Jesus. And we'll just go places. <laughs> You totally should. You, you, I would, I would, go, I would go with you for that. We could go out. I'd love to see you preach at the court square. We'll just do here. Scully Jesus. I'll get the robe, shave the mustache. Mm. Jesus didn't have a mustache. Uh, it's, it's mustaches are frowned upon. Of the, it's, is it Jez? Is it Jez? I'm about to Hebrew. The Jewish faith, yes, Hebrew. No, Hebrews not language, the, not the Jewish, the Hebrews, the Hebrews, the modern day Hebrews. We know some of them. Do we? Mm-hmm. Huh. I don't know. I don't think they consider themselves Jewish. Uh, you know, interesting thing about being Jewish. The the interesting thing about being Jewish is it doesn't matter whether you consider yourself Jewish or not. You're Jewish. Is Jewish a race or a religion? It is a religion and a race. It is a race of people. And so... Uh, because I'm clearly not Jewish. Are you sure? No. But I could become Jewish in that way. I'm. Uh, not. You're still goyim if you become Jewish. You're still not really Jewish. It's funny, that's what they call you in the vampires when you're not a vampire. That's true. You're still not Jewish, even though even though they even though they're like, yeah, you can convert, but you just can't convert. White Jesus had a mustache. Oh, White Jesus does have a mustache. How do you know it's White Jesus? I mean, look at him. He's rosy cheeks. I was just I was just thinking about this. I was watching a movie yesterday. And it's supposed to be in 1883. Oh yeah, fucking! You're watching Yellowstone. No, no, this is a uh, this is the commercial. The, really the one good. this is called the One Blue Eye, and I'm watching it. And dude's wife had died. Blah blah blah. And he's he's looking in her closet, and there's a Bible, and he lifts up the Bible, and then he puts the Bible down, and it's on a tray that has Jesus on it. It's a a Jesus tray, right? And it was the typical Jesus per. Uh, the typical Jesus drawing, right? Picture. Or painting picture. And I was wondering, I, I wonder when somebody out there knows this, when did the, when did the, the Jesus of Jerusalem turn into the Jesus of America? I wonder if the, I wonder if you can find like paintings from, you know, the dark ages where Jesus still looks like he lives in, Jerusalem, not California. Do the Jesus people do? Do the Jews? That's what we call them, right? Jews, the Jews. Yeah, the Jewish. The Jewish. Do the Jewish people have Jesus? Oh uh, yeah, they do. Is their Jesus black? If you went to Israel, no, their Jesus is not black. Oh, why? Well, because he wasn't. Jesus wasn't black. No. Well, was he not? He was middle. He was middle. Was, he, was is Israel's he was, Jesus not white? He was Middle Eastern. So is he? If you go, if you go to church, do they have churches in in Israel. Yeah, they have. There's synagogue. Well, only synagogues. They have, no, they have churches in Israel too. Is there a white Jesus? 
in Israel? Well, I don't know what the like. If you went, because you can go to you can go to uh, you can go to Israel and do the the Christian, you know, the, the walk through Jesus' the footstep wall, yeah. and go to all the places you know where the cross was and all that. I think that the, because the the reality is the Roman Catholic Church is the one who changed the depiction of Jesus. So I would believe that all the pictures, even in Israel, they did would be control the people. Would be more, uh, more of a modern Jesus. You less watch of any, a do you watch Palestinian any Jesus, Glenn Beck, or a Jewish Jesus, or a, I don't know. You watch any Glenn Beck? I do not. I don't watch Glenn Beck. He's he went. A, he went. He went full. <laughs> he went to the. He went to the Vatican. Did he? Several times yeah. he's been to the Vatican. But he, I watched a pretty interesting video. It's probably an hour long of him talking about how there is a war within the Vatican and there is a good faction and an evil faction. And there's some, like, some serious shit going on within the Vatican. I mean, it, the, the reality is you think about any place. It doesn't politics. have to be. Any place where there's politics, there's always going to be a battle when some people are going to, like, you, some people are going to think they're the good and the other people are evil. I mean, there's always, especially when you're talking about a power vacuum like that, like the, the, the Pope, while we kind of while we kind of laugh about the Pope here in the United States, not all people. I'm I'm sorry, Catholics, but the Pope uh, is really a big figure in the world. Like the Pope is a big deal in the world, and that type of power, yeah. There's gonna, cardinals and bishops be fighting all the time. I bet. I bet there's. I guarantee you, there's factions in there where they're like, yeah, those guys worship the devil. Yeah, that's what I. Yeah, that's, yeah, what, that's what I'm saying. And then the other guys are like, <clears throat> those guys worship the devil. It's no different than the you know the political stuff we got going on here. I am sure that if you're stealing luggage out of the airport in Baltimore, that you think you are the you are the righteous person. That you're the righteous man. You think so? Yeah, I guarantee you. Really think so? You, I guarantee you. He thought he was the righteous. That he's on the side of good. There because was at no point because was he he's like, because he's insane. At no point was he no. But I mean, I'm just saying that that particular that particular side of the fence believes that they are that they are the good guys. But a jewel thief. What about a jewel thief breaking in, or or the guy that's tunneling under and going to steal all the gold? He probably doesn't think. He he knows he's well, the bad guy. No no no. The guy tunneling in the, the guy that uh, the guy tunneling under the vault to steal the gold has dismissed the moral implications of good and evil. Maybe he's and just doing just, it to fund a bigger operation. Yeah, he's just he's just trying he's, to. The, the reality is, M1 tanks are expensive, John, and gold is monetarily tradable all over the world. And I know that the Mahdi Army has an M1 Abrams, so. Gold and one, I, I think it's tradable. Just get with Hillary Clinton, get get the gold they stole from Gaddafi. I know, I know, I know. It's it's amazing. Anyways, but all right, guy. In closing comments here, the world is a much better place than we make it out to be. Like the reality is, it's a much better place than we make it out to be. And probably the guy that you think you don't like, you if you hung out with him in a bar, you probably still wouldn't like him, but you probably wouldn't hate him as much. Oh yeah, I'd, I'd go with that. Yeah. <clears throat> what's your favorite gun out of all your guns? What is what's the favoriteest thing that you have? The 1911 Cold Dead Hands, my friend. What's um, the weirdest gun you have? I don't know the name of it. It's a it is a totally bullshit put together gun. It is a F, just imagine an FN FAL that got put together with a uh like a Mac 10. It's not really a Mac 10. It's like an M9 or something like that. It's a semi-automatic version that takes 95 round Russian drums. I don't have a fucking clue and what that is. And it's this big. It's huge. And it weighs <laughs> it weighs more than an FNFAL and it just shoots 9 millimeter. That's the weirdest kind of hell. Where did that where did that even come from? <laughs> it came from the inner it came from Gunbroker. Okay, if you could You've disappeared every gun in the world. Yes. And you can only have you've re, you've replaced every gun with one gun. What would you replace it with? I don't I, every gun with one gun. Yep, nineteen eleven, Musoc nineteen eleven. Everybody in the entire world has a Musoc eleven. Yeah, we would all be on equal footing, and then it would just require skill in order to. Uh, it would require skill to end problems. Would you not? Come on, let's be honest. 
What what do you have on you right now? I don't have anything on me. Is it you would replace it with a Glock 19? I would never replace it with a definitely not a Glock 19. Like the Glock 19 is not only is it the Tupperware gun of the of criminals, it is an under-engineered piece of junk that works every single time. That that's 100% not true. Have you ever watched any there's a YouTube channel that used to be around, maybe you've heard of it. It's called FPS Russia. Seen it? He did some testing, and he said that the Glock is a superior weapon. Well, I mean, how many guns does he own? <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, I mean, it's a, it's okay. I mean, if if you if you if you got a choice between a high point and a Glock 19, get the Glock 19. Okay, get the Glock 19. Even though the high point round for round will probably do the exact same thing that the Glock 19 does. Okay, so you might not be aware. There's over 3,500 comments on a video Mm -hmm. on TikTok right now about you talking about Glocks and high points. And there's dudes on there that are just like, you just have to put thousands of rounds. You can't just let a gun sit. You have to shoot it all the time or it will malfunction. Like the the comments in here are absolutely fucking insane. Yeah, because it's. I want to take a high point through Turan Tacticals course. Do you think he has a, a Turan high point? I, I, <laughs> if if Turan Tactical had a high point, it's going to be a you know $15,000 high point uh, with all kinds of widgets on it. But you could run Terran's course with a, with a high point. We go down to Mexico. Okay, we go to Mexico. We have Terran set up a course down there. In Mexico? Yeah. Why Mexico? Because I can do anything I want in Mexico. Oh, got you. Okay, Mexico. So we're in Mexico. Taryn's got Taryn's got the setup. But if we're in Mexico, we're not going to use. We're not. Gonna, the reality is, if we're in Mexico, we're not going to use Glock 19s because nine millimeter is an inferior cartridge. Thirty eight super. No. Nope. Nineteen eleven. We're going to be we're going to be shooting uh, uh, five seven by twenty eight. Okay. Well, let's go to South Africa. And South it's, Africa. And it's high points. Okay, it's high points. I don't know if you can get high points in South Africa. He'll take them there. Okay, so he's illegally importing firearms in the South no, Africa. No, he has a, he has dealer. He's got paperwork. okay, gotcha. He's got dealer paperwork, and we're gonna what shoot buffalo or no? We're gonna do his course. You can't look if we're gonna go all the way to South Africa. We got to go on a safari. And Keanu Reeves will be there. What cooler, what cooler video would we have if we went on a real safari with high points? Jacob, like, Jacob can be there with his buffalo gun. Yeah, Jake. Just hey, Jacob, just for backup. I mean. Uh, the high point's going to do it, but, you know, John's a little rusty, so maybe we might need some backup. I'll use a bow. A bow. That would be kind of cool, too. Would you use dynamite on your bow? No. Come on. Like every- Pitfall? Didn't Pitfall have a dynamite guy? Man, everybody in the 80s fired explosive-tipped arrows. Nobody. No, you can't think of anybody who shot arrows in the 80s that did not First time I saw that was Rambo. I'm pretty sure I saw a dude showing how to do that uh, on YouTube uh, the other day. I mean, day. they did it quite a bit in the Dukes of Hazard too. That was dynamite, though. Because they couldn't own firearms either. Huh. But I'm, I'm close. Yeah.